Welcome to Social Sessions. I'm joined today with a very interesting, charismatic guest who's like a dog with a bone when he gets onto something. From the streets of Edinburgh to the prison system to being a lawyer, there is not much he's not covered. We will be talking mainly about the miscarriage of justice of Luke Mitchell, but we'll delve into a whole host of subjects and topics. Today, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Forbes. How are you doing, Scott? I'm good, Sean. Yourself? Aye, good to see you. Always good to see <laughs> you. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to take you back. I did ask kind of odd, I guess. Just take you back to kind of your childhood. Um, <clears throat> how was that kind of growing up in Dalkeith and stuff like that, Scott? Sean, sure, I grew up in a, a minor village, Dander Hall. Um, three miles, four miles from where Jody Jones was murdered. Aye. Uh, my dad was a, a construction worker, but he blacklisted. My dad was blacklisted, couldn't work in the UK. Aye. A communist. Aye. Car carrying communist, right? So my father worked abroad, Holland and Germany, and Alvida St. Pete. Do you remember that? Aye. The, the, uh, my, the... my father was the first Alvida St. <laughs> Pete. Aye, aye, aye. And uh, <clears throat> I left there at 10, 11. My granny, I've told you before, my grandmother was a... I want it a better one. Thanks, Terry. Ten properties in Region Royal Terrace in Edinburgh. Aye. Oh, the 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 the, the properties are. She, I think, a ten at the max. Aye. Know? And she was feed Denny. Do, do, do you know where I'm? Aye, Denny. Well, obviously, I'm coming old, so it's no far. Aye. Ah, my old granny was a monk maid, a farmhand. Aye. That moved in, but <laughs> made big. Do you know? Aye. So I left a mining village at a ten or eleven. And then spent my teenage years just at the top of Easter Road, you know, where the aye, aye. Carlton Terrace and Regent Terrace up above the hall. And so aye, my, my childhood was all right, Sean. Aye. Aye. I had a violent father, a heavy drinker, a heavy worker, and a heavy handed father. And uh, <clears throat> aye, it was like, I'm not the worst childhood. Eh? Never... So, what, how did you, how did the, uh, obviously, I know you went kind of went into residential school and that, Scott. It, was it 14? Was it 14? You sure, I, I was put in a, a, a list D school called Lonendale, which is done in Bigger. Aye. Where Aye. And um, at the time, there was Jess, Jesse Field and there was um, Welly, Welly Farm. And, Jesse Field's done free centre. Aye, 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 and um, not... Oh, no, 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 side. No, it wasn't on side of open prison, but it was up that way. Um, oh. oh. Dungavel, no. Dun, well, no, Dun, well, Dungavel was the, the open prison I ended right. up in. Oh, what was the name of it? The, the lock conditions. Right. You know, like, aye, aye. I was in, um, Lonendale was a, a holiday camp, really, aye. For, for laddies. Eh? Aye. I met them off at Drumshapel, Peel Glenmore. <laughs> right. Well, they, listen, I never had a, they were cruel people. Aye. I put a, a wee boy away at 14 for not going to school and then send them into a, a list D school where I didn't have to go to school. I know. You know, and you're obviously attractive. learning, aye, aye, learning aye. bad behaviours and Every, stuff, aren't you? I met boy, was Peel Glen. Aye. Met laddies for Peel Glen and um, listen, I was lucky, Sean. When I left this D school, a man got me an apprenticeship in the railway. I said my time was a China a carpenter. Aye. But Sean, I hate it. See, we were in the bowling sides, pal. The first thing I used to look for was how to get out. Aye. <laughs> I mean, over the fence, back at half three o'clock out. Aye. Ah, it was never for me, Sean. Never for me, pal. So obviously, after that then, Scott, we obviously, I know you went to raise the, you kind of had a wee bit of conflict with the law not. What happened there? Ah, Sean, sure, listen, I was in, um, I think I'd done five or six romans. Aye. Like 14 day lie downs and stuff, right? And uh, just trouble, just trouble. Always had a nose for trouble, pal. Aye. Um, as I got older, it gets better trouble, it gets more intellectual. And I, <laughs> when I was younger, I was always in trouble, Sean, and um, Listen, I was sentenced to five years, and and I think it was nine, nine, December ninety two. I, I took a, a a bag for a security cord van. Aye. Everybody says I I chapped aside there. That's just nonsense. Aye. The boy who done that committed suicide. But I watched a man crossing the street carrying bags of money like that, and I put a handkerchief in my face, pulled my cap down, and took the bag. Aye. Right? And then he gave me five five years for five years. So where did where was it? Glen Oakle, you said just was it Glen Oakle? Listen, I started to say. I started up in the Stockton. They promised me if I behaved myself, you know, you could stay there. Aye. Uh, that didn't last long. <laughs> Very local. Oh, Jesus. What an eye on <laughs> No, I know. Obviously, yeah. the, the tales, obviously, I've, I've, I've been in prison a long time myself, and the tales of Glen Oakle, like, obviously, you may be, be able to tell us something, like, what it was, what it was like. I said, no, well, maybe I'll need now, but I went up there in 92, and there were, oh, there was pff, riots weekly. Aye. Right? Uh, the first guy I've seen, he's now dead, Steve McNair. Aye. Yeah, I grew up in Leaf for Easter Road and McNair was there, right? And he's walking towards me, shackled in one hand to the, the ankles, and he's got screwed. I'm like, where am I? Yeah. And uh, 
Oh, listen, Glenoco was wild. Again, the only good thing, Sean, that two good things come out of Glenoco for me. Aye. I read my first book. A man shut my door, I think, four days before Christmas, and he had a... He was, he was from Newcastle, a minister, do you know what the dog collar was? You ever read a book before, Scott? No, I never. And uh, he started telling me he was from Blythe, Northumberland, and Aye. come from mining villages. And so my dad had caravans down in Blythe, Aye. right, as I was growing up. So there was a conversation, and he had a book, uh, both front page and back page torn off for roaches, obviously, <laughs> right? You want to read this? The Rage Angels by Sidney Sheldon. Aye. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic, right? So I read that book in the couple two days before Christmas. How much property have you got for it? No, I know much. How are you? You've got intern lib. So we're all waiting on ah, that deal. De de ah, Derek Elg Aye. told me in the morning. Derek Og was Aye. my QC. I ended up going to work with, work with Derek. He's got to plead guilty to this and you'll only get 30 months. Oh, I plead guilty and got a five. Oof. And he comes downstairs and he says to me, I'll, I'll have the remedy by Christmas. I say, you just fucking told me. Aye, aye. But he, he remedied it. Aye. Do you know what I mean? And it, <clears throat> so Glen, Glen will call, I, mean, I was up there for about a month or something. It was aye. long enough. Aye, <laughs> aye. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> long enough. <laughs> <clears throat> Back to Zog, did you read territory? <laughs> yeah. and they, but no, listen, I, I didn't put Jill down as a bad experience, sure. I, I started reading in prison. Aye. Right? And um, when I got released for prison in 92, I just read. No, no, just read. I mean, it's like you've been deprived of something for these years. Eh? Is that you just realising, like, obviously, <laughs> the, the, like, the, the, the kind of, you've got that kind of academic skill, like, obviously growing up in, in kind of, these residential schools that sometimes they, they, they kind of make you think you've no got that kind of skills well, you, like you're, kind you're of... told you're told you're stupid aren't you aye at least these school listen none of us went to school I was driving tractors and <laughs> <Aye. laughs> cow dung and all that you know aye. better than going to school that's where everybody chose to go you, you chose to go to the gardens rather than go to school aye. you got told but when I started reading listen do you know I've mentioned this to you before a woman called Kate Smith aye I, I went to a wee place the size of this by you, and 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 I be on the top of the road called Second Chance Lear, Learning. Mm -hmm. I bought a computer. I didn't even know how to turn it on, sir. Mm -hmm. Right. So I went to try and get help with that, and I met this woman Kate Smith, and she said, "I'm not being funny, Scott. I'm kind of glad you missed that course." So I went and seen this course, and we're all sitting learning type A, B, and you know, Aye. that would never last. Aye. That Aye. 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 And then she said, I'm glad you never made that. Go and read that book. And she gave me Plato's Republic. So I, I've, I've read wee bits. It's, 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 it's an amazing book. Aye, it's an amazing book. teaches you nothing's changed. Aye, it's it's the same. the ruling class and the middle mm -hmm. classes. And we're just, we're, we're the, you know. And uh, read that, Scott. And I went back to her a week later and I explained what I just read. And she said, oh, Scott, that's fourth year university. Why don't you go to uni? <laughs> Next thing we were at New Battle Abbey. Me and Kate, we got lost in. So New Battle Abbey took me into Luke Mitchell. Aye. When I graduated from New, New Battle Abbey, I think on the Friday, I'll get dates wrong and the trolls will be on here. Aye. And uh, I think it was, uh, we, I think we, the, we graduated on the Friday and Jody was called on the Saturday or the Sunday. Aye. And, and, and a boy we studied with came to my house in Leith after our, the day after the murder. Right. And that's why that, for day one, sure. That's how you kind of obviously had that interest in the case. Oh, see, see my name. I took the boy with a scruffy neck. Not a scruff, do you know, like, but roughly like Aye. that. And then <clears throat> I spoke to half a dozen people before I'd done it because at that time, speaking to the police, like, mm -hmm. from my background and stuff, eh, I'd been out of jail a long time, Aye. 10 years, nine years. And then um, I'm now in New Battle Abbey and I'm, I'm faced with this wee girl. Butcher, there you go. There's no other word for what happened to Jody Jones. <clears throat> and, um, and I've got a guy sitting in front of me, mad with drugs, methadone, mm -hmm. speed, all that, big scratches on his face. He, he banned, banned in, the, in the college for looking at computers because he had a fascination for mutilated corpses. If you see Jody's crime, crime photos, he would be looking at these images online. Kind of things, aye. And weird boy, and he, oh, listen, he was a nice guy also, a brilliant mm -hmm. musician, and I'm no, right? And uh, I went to people, I went to school with him. He, he come from an area called Gilmont and Grace Mountain in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. Our pals for here are gangsters or what, criminals. Aye, aye. Call them what you want, you know, the, the head of the scheme and all that. I went to them and says, look, and they, they, all, they, they, they all peep team my, my age. Oh, on you go, sir. Mm -hmm. They knew me, eh? They aye. knew I was in the, 
exaggerating here. This was something that presented itself. And I got faced with a choice, Sean Day or Day or no. And, and I've done it. Sometimes I've sat back and thought, I wish I hadn't. Aye. But um, then after what would, it... What, yeah. would, what, would, what, what, what would make you think, like, obviously, what, what, why would you... Obviously, looking back, right, there's a wee lassie being butchered, Scott, right, and obviously you're going to get people saying, oh, why did you not do this and why did you not? And it's easy for people to say what they would do and what they wouldn't do. Um, so what would you say to the people, like, obviously, that say, oh, why did you, did you not do this and why did you not come forward for quicker or this kind of stuff that's well, out there? Sean, it, it come across like that, but I waited 18 hours. 18 hours after Jodie was murdered, somebody presented themselves. So that's 18 days, stuff days, like that. 18 hours. I took him in a car and he went to the police station. But it was on record. Aye. The police noted Mark Cain was to be traced, traced and questioned. Aye. And he never done it. Right? I was, I'm then up at university up in Stirling and the trial was going on. And the minute I'm reading about the trial, I'm thinking, this is all wrong. Aye. There's new evidence. We'll go into this later. Aye, aye. And then Mark Cain came up to Stirling, Stirling Uni show night and he... He moved into mixed dormitories. Mm -hmm. They were sharing a, a big dormitory with a blind boy. Andy's name was right, and they were taking his food, but they were stoned. They weren't stealing, but they were all stoned. Aye. And a blind guy going to the shops for his groceries. They were Aye. taking it when they were stoned, Aye. right? And Kane's stabbing a door in a bad mood on it. And you remember all that for like being residential ah, college? Of so I asked him, Did you ever get questioned about Jody Jones? And he says, No. I said, What? Ah, they never ever come and spoke to me. I said, you're having a laugh, Mark, isn't it? And he said, no. And um, <clears throat> I went... So after you going to the police and presenting this evidence, uh, they didn't even question him? Nah, they didn't question him. They, they, they marked in their files, uh, Mark Kane, to be traced and questioned. He was living 300, 400 yards away from the police station. They never even bothered to question so, and what, what, what kind of stuff did you tell them, Scott? What did you tell them? Did you tell them? I like, never tell them. No, and I just took him in with a scruff, no, the scruff. Aye. And he went in and gave them. But they, they spoke to other people, cleaners at, at the college and that. They aye. were all concerned. He had, Sean, his eye was all bloodshot. And he had that. Keep doing that right, left, his, his left eye. Aye. Big scratches, you know, wasn't it? Aye. I know what a scratch is. Ah, of course, I. So when I ask him what happened to his eyes, he says, oh, I fell into a bush, oh, I've done this and that. I said, where have you been? Where the college is, where Jody's found is just a wood. Aye, you aye. can walk right in for the college, you didn't have to climb walls or nothing. You can walk right aye. He's in the woods. There's also a sighting in the Luke Mitchell on New Battle Road by two women. I believe that to be Mark Kane. Mm -hmm. Mark Kane wore a parker all the time. There's a big question mark in the Luke. Luke Mitchell case about Aye. Parker, eh? I remember I've heard the wee bits and bobs. Right? allegedly burnt it. Sean, I've never heard so much nonsense ever, ever in a criminal case. The, 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 the Parker, a big green Parker, was burnt in a wee log burner. Do you know, like Aye. a wee thing about that side? Aye. Anybody who's got any idea of crime knows that's not possible. Aye. But they run the story. They never found any forensics when they checked the back green, but they still run the story anyway. They burnt a Parker. We only found out last year. The police under a warrant had taken a green Parker for Luke Mitchell's friend that stayed in and hid it for the defence. And then went into court and said we never had any more search warrants. They had search warrants for a wee boy, Keith, I can't remember his surname, and went and took a Parker for a green Parker coat, what they were accusing Mitchell of having, Luke Mitchell's pal had, and they took it for the house and hid it. But Mark Kane also wore a Parker. Aye. Now everybody else says that, his own new battle road at the time, could have been him. So I'm thinking this is important, Mark Cain's important. Aye. I'm not saying Mark Cain killed Jody Jones. No, but he's obviously a man of... <laughs> at, at, at the time, myself and others, not aye. just me, you'd say, several other people were convinced he could have been the mm -hmm. killer. So I went to Edinburgh one day and uh, Donald Finley's girlfriend, Jane Park Farkerson, comes to the, 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 the door of the High Court and I say, excuse me, you just have to be aware of somebody, Mark Cain. Now I'm not saying... If Mark Cain had been presented to the court, he looked like, look, he wears, wears a Parker, he's in the area at the time. It breed a, a, a reasonable doubt. Aye. And then um, a, a solicitor, Fairn right now, your moment company, I seen him and I said, nah, I'm not going to speak to you, what I'm going to do is, I went to a solicitor called Robbie Burnett, right, he's a solicitor advocate show. Aye. A very trustworthy man. Mm -hmm. He's retired now, but mm -hmm. people know him for being square. Aye. Right? Mm -hmm. But even they catch him in a pub, with criminals and all, aye. right? He was a, lot, a solicitor and, mm -hmm. and, and he held his position well. Aye, aye. So he was a trustworthy man. I went to Robbie Burnett and said, Robbie, this is the case. And we drew up an affidavit. Mm -hmm. That was 2005, during Luke Mitchell's trial. 
So this is something that has to be put. I'm not a Luke Mitchell supporter per se. Mm-hmm. Luke Mitchell was a miscarriage of justice. He never mm-hmm. killed Jody Jones and we'll go into him maybe later. I'm a Jody Jones supporter. Mm-hmm. I spoke out long before Luke Mitchell was ever anywhere near a court of law or being in the paper, even before he just, just to let the viewers know, Scott, how long did it take? Like, I know Luke, Luke Mitchell was 14 when it happened, mm-hmm. but he was 16 when we arrived when it got I like 18 months, sure. And the papers oh, were day. already kind of writing every day, mate. stuff, aren't they? Every like, day. Um, they were already kind of writing Luke <coughs> Mitchell was a killer and stuff like that. No, no that, but just it was kind of... Oh, no, 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 listen, within two days we were telling people uh, we're, we're, lo- we're no other suspects. We're not looking for anyone else. He was 14. What does that tell you? If you read that, we're not looking for anyone else. But the boyfriend, the 14 year old boyfriend, Luke Mitchell, they were naming him after like three days. And anybody that's close to, that knows how the criminal justice works, the criminal justice system works, the police and the media work together. What's <laughs> We know that. 100%. Um, so do you think there was a, I kind of sense maybe that the police were telling the, the media to put stuff out early bells. Sean, without any shadow of doubt, and I name her Jane, Jane Hamlin for the record, isn't it the only one, by the way? But I pick, pick her, she's the only one that keeps grasping it. Aye. You've got professors of criminology, law, high court judges too, John Aye. Scott, Lord mm-hmm. John Scott, and, and Lady Maggie Scott, both speaking out and saying this case is all wrong. Mm-hmm. You've got professors of criminology, oh, high court judges, pr- mm-hmm. professors, uh, investigative journalists, forensic institute, you've got everybody saying something's wrong with this case, and mm-hmm. you've got a daily record attack. Mm-hmm. No experience, no education, nothing. I'm telling you, Mitchell done it. I Tell know. us how, how? Hey, I be no more than you know. Like what well, I've been on this case twenty years, Sean, and you know me. Aye. For personal experience, when I course, look into right. something, I go. No, definitely there's nothing. That, I didn't leave a, a, a brick on top there. I look, and then all the time, there's nothing, nothing. I've heard the rumours. Oh, he was close to his mum, and he's this, and he's a weirdo. So what? Well, that didn't make you kill, kill anyone. Well, see, see, obviously, I, I was in Pullman, Scott, when he was there, mm-hmm. and the kind of story there was that he was kind of. Just, I'm just like, because obviously there's this stuff kind of gets said, or oh, uh, like it was like um, him and his mum were too close and they yeah. were this and that. And this is the sense that was going about in Pullman as well when I was there. And it was a story <laughs> that we were all told is, is in there. Um, and obviously it was, it was a high profile case. He got a lot, of, he got a really hard time in Pullman. Um, but looking back at all that and just seeing, can you describe Luke Mitchell just a, a wee bit, just so people know? Like, because he is a wee, he's no, but he's, he's, he's kind of sure. unique, isn't he? He's no. Sure. He's a very intellectual boy. Aye. He's no, listen, Luke Mitchell comes from a, a, a middle class scheme. Aye. For one of a better word, the Brookside Coast. Aye, 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 aye. And they say me detached or detached, we <laughs> bungalows with the garages and that nice gardens, and, and that's Luke Mitchell. Aye. When I looked in his background, listen, he was a weird though, he was into burning his cell and he was into, he was a hash smoker, mm-hmm. soap burn. And they, that, they carried a knife. Anybody who smoked soap bar had a knife. Aye, <laughs> you definitely. Could, you couldn't smoke if you never had it. No, no, I know. You know, aye, aye. You know? And uh, listen, it was actually I, a thing called hot knives. Ah, just, I, hot like, knives, I remember right. people used to say hot knives. It was, mm-hmm. a, it was like, it's like a brick. Aye. You know, so you heat it up and you cut with a knife, right? So he, he was a boy that carried a knife. She went to the army. He was a bit weird. But I never found anything extraordinary in his childhood. Mm-hmm. He might have been too close to his mum. That's open mm-hmm. for debate because people keep saying that to me and some of the police but we know things about Luke Mitchell that you don't well mm-hmm. what now, if they knew something about Luke Mitchell that their, their case in the high court was very weak no, they, no. if they knew something else they would have added that to it so, well, it was, 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 was kind of like the first kind of um, big circumstantial case in Scotland wasn't it so I mean there's what so, is what, uh, well I mean we're going to get more detail but what, just for the kind of brief what is the evidence against none. them Sean, I hate saying that because people look at you and say, ah, that, that nonsense. There isn't any evidence. None. Circumstantial evidence. And and if you go through the circumstantial evidence now, which we will do later, it's just nonsense. Mm-hmm. Manufactured. Aye. Well, I seen that Sean Toll. Well, I can, he's a bad man. And I say, I'm positive. I seen him my way up there. And nobody's seen you at all. You were somewhere else. They just fitted in the pieces. Mm-hmm. No evidence. I keep re- reiterating that and people look at you. There is not one thread of evidence against Luke Mitchell that can tie him to the murder of Jody Jones. Now, so see, like, see, um, as you say, it's like for for better, for the want of a better word, poor Jody Jones was butchered, which yes. was an absolute uh, tragedy. But you would expect 
um, there would be quite a lot of forensic evidence. What was <laughs> the forensic evidence against Luke? No, nothing. Nothing. There's no, there, there's no blood, there's no semen, there's no saliva, there's no DNA, there's no hair. Now, Jody Jones was beaten, Sean. People, people I've, I've read, read things online and, and people say things that are just wrong. Here's, Jody was battered first. Aye. It's ragdolled. Aye. Remember that way once she was ragdolled. Hair pulled out, he dragged along the ground, and we know that through dirt on her socks and socks have been put back on. Is Luke Mitchell a big boy? Oh, now he has shown eyes. Ah, he's a big lad. No, but was he big then? I can't exactly remember him. He looked kind of I, thin. Like, I, kinda, I, I don't think, he was not physically capable. I think Jody would have beat him. Jody Jones grew up in a rough, rough home. Aye. A rough brother and all that. We're going to Aye. later, right? And a rough sister. Who's a, they blamed him for being into Marlon Manson. Only Marlon Manson. Loads of people went into Marlon Manson. But Jody's back sister. Then, black lipstick and the black Aye. eyebrow. Having a boyfriend. The boyfriend threw sperms on the T-shirt. A mixed DNA sperm on pants and a wee drop of his blood on the other bar. He's into Marlon Manson, but he never even got questioned. So who else Who who else got questioned in the Luke Mitchell case? Nobody. Nobody? Nobody, sure. Within an hour. Listen, this is roughly... That, 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 I'm going to play devil's advocate here, uh, Scott, right? Because obviously I'm, I, I, I look, I, I've seen Luke Mitchell's case and I, I believe he's innocent, but for the viewers and stuff like that, there's a lot yeah, of people. So for devil's advocate, um, how how's how's it even possible then for the police to go and just question one person? How did that happen? How can, how can that happen? So when they turn up at a new battle school, right? Luke Mitchell finds Jody Jones. Mm-hmm. Well, he, I don't believe that. That's something we'll cover mm-hmm. later. Him, Jody's granny, Alice Walker, her sister, Janine. Janine Jones and her boyfriend, Stephen Kelly. Three names should have been, right? Aye. They, they all find the body. And they go back up to the school. How yeah. long after? How long after the, is this? This is maybe the 11 o'clock at night. Jody's allegedly killed at quarter past five, but that's also a questionable time. Right. right? But the police put it there, mm-hmm. quarter past five. So I think I live in a, roughly approximately 11 o'clock at night to find the body and they go back to the school car park. Mm-hmm. All the Jones family are cuddling each other. The granny's been over the wall, by the way, and she's cuddled Jody. So anybody with any experience in crime, including us, mm-hmm. us anybody with ha- half a brain in criminal, know to take the day close, you. Yeah? Aye. Know to take phones and everything. They don't take nothing. Within a, an hour, uh, uh, Jody Bean found the grandmother, who's been over the wall, cradled Jody, Aye. is getting driven about Dalkeith for cups of coffee at different homes. She's in a police station, and instead of taking her clothes and giving her a white suit, they just put her in a police car and drive her back to number one suspect's house. For so, her so, so she doesn't even, because she doesn't get questioned. Ah, she doesn't get questioned, and she doesn't get a place taken off her. The police arrive on the scene, Sean. This is uh, where the, I think, it, I think, only my opinion. Because that's hard to believe for viewers, Scott. Oh, listen, it wasn't just her. Listen, they, they, they allowed the grandmother to get driven about the O'Keefe in her clothes, right? Stephen Kelly, who's Jodie's uh, brother-in-law, whose sperm's on her Aye. T-shirt and, her blood, and his blood's on her bra. He's part of the search party. The first thing he says to the police that arrive on the scene, I take it you've been at fucking mine. Then the sister asks, this is the one that sticks in my mind more and most in the case. As they're walking away from finding the body, Janine... Asks Stephen Kelly, was she naked? What a question you ask. Now they know Jodie's dead, but Jodie could have hung herself. Aye. She could have fell fell and banged her head, or you know, she might have taken drugs and been oh, sick. Those, and, aye, yeah, aye. Why was she asked that question? Was she naked? How, who did she know that could have hurt Jodie that would have left her naked? Now bear, bear in mind, Janine leaves her family home at the age of 14. Mm-hmm. And Jodie Jones is desperate to leave her family home at the same age at 14. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not you can read the name with that. Aye, aye. Mm-hmm. My own mind tells me something's wrong when somebody asks, was she naked? So there's four people in the search party. Mm-hmm. Every one of them get to go home, wash their clothes. The granny washes the clothes, but the old granny knew where to walk to find the body. She goes back to the police station. They didn't take her clothes off her. She then goes back to Janine, uh, Judith and Jody's home. She's covered in Jody because she's mm-hmm. cradled her and they've, they've not taken any forensic. Then they've all got phones on and they're swapping phones. Jodie's got a phone that belongs to the mum. The mum's got a phone that belongs to the sister. The sister's got two SIM cards that belong to this one and belong to... And is this on record, Scott? Oh, 100% on record. They, they, they never take any phone, so they allow everybody to swap phones. Nobody knows who, who was communicating by who because there's several phones all owned by... Listen, we all know the scheme. Aye. Some of them were SIM cards and they, they couldn't put the SIM to the phone. 
Some were phones that they couldn't put. Said, do, do you know when mm -hmm. some phones were registered to this person or that person? None of them. Every one of them just got, got to leave, apart from one boy, 14 year old, years of age. He's sitting here clapping his Alsatian dog and his mother's phoning him. And he tells you, man, stop fucking phoning, stop phoning, I'll phone you back, man. stop phoning. And the coppers look over, who's that? Well, that's Luke Mitchell. He's the boyfriend who found the body. Now, they've also had two police officers at Jody's home. Mm -hmm. And when they leave, they get told she left with Luke Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Now, who told the police that? We don't know. Can they ever find that out? But, but somebody says to the police, she left with Luke Mitchell. No, that she left to go and find Luke Mitchell or go and meet him. She left with him. Because that, that, that is the... The the the, key, the the truth is that Luke left to meet Jodie. Is that ah, right? Ah, they didn't leave together. Ah. Aye. So now you have got a police police officers all. And is that is that agreed in the evidence? Yes, now? yes, that, definitely, right, right. definitely. Jodie left the home that night to go meet Luke. Right. And then, um, but at the car, at the, at the school, shown in this car park, people are passing phones and they're all cuddling each other. You've got a grandmother's mm -hmm. covered in Jodie, right? Cuddling everybody, so everybody's now contaminated forensically. Oh, it's bizarre. It's, it's bizarre that the police would. Here's the here's one for you, and, and this is the first time I've seen it. Aye. When the police arrive, Jody's got an auntie called um, Agnes. Ag Agnes Pelops is Casey. Oh, right. She works in the children's panel, child safeguarder, unless mm -hmm. Luke Mitchell. But she works at safeguarder in the children's panel with Craig Doby, the leading copper in the investigation. So when he arrives here, he knows Jodie's auntie. Oh, hello, Agnes. But he also knows Jodie's granny. Jodie's mm -hmm. granny's a, a matriarch mm -hmm. in the scheme. Mm -hmm. She's a postwoman, but some of her family, some of her Jodie's family are respectable. She's the Joneses. Aye. Some of them on the Jones family are nice people. Mm -hmm. Some on the Walker side also. But there's a lot of junk and heroin aye, aye, aye. and criminality and, and Joe Jones, her brother, and, and, and old old Agnes is known within the scheme. Some people within the scheme always put her as a police asset. Right. She was a local policewoman and, and her family got away with selling whatever in the Aye. scheme. Aye. So the police know her day when they arrive, oh, hey, Agnes, and hey, uh, to the mother of mm -hmm. Alice, right? And Alice conducted the whole show. So the police are now driving people about, they've been over the wall in a crime scene. Come on, anybody with any. Is this local police then? Ah, like, it's like, off his local Aye. police, and then Doby and that arrived. He was a detective superintendent for Edinburgh. But by this time, the police have already let... Ah, they've, they've, already, been, they've allowed people to go home covered in Jodie's blood. What, did, what was Doby's answer to that? No, and he just says, oh, we can't, we, our investigation was the finest police work that we've ever carried out. You know what I'm saying? So a, there's people there that have been involved in finding the body. Mm -hmm. They're covered in blood. Mm -hmm. They don't get questioned. No. They get dropped about uh, Dougie, uh, and uh, then they... Uh, Pick on look. Ah, ah. Now, they pick on look, but, but six days later, they go back to Alice Walker, right? And the granny, Jodie's Aye. granny, is, what clothes were you wearing? Oh, I've well, well, washed them all. So she's washed her own clothes and the clothes of her, her, her granddaughter, Janine, mm -hmm. Jodie's sister, and her boyfriend, they've all been there. Mm -hmm. But the already clothes have been washed by the same woman who, who then goes on to threaten people. My Joe's going to hurt you for telling the police. She told key witnesses, don't go forward. Why would Jodie's grandmother tell Crown witnesses? Crown witnesses. Well, these two boys are part of the, the, you've heard of the moped boys. Aye. Two boys at the scene at the time of the death. Aye. Right? One of them's a grandson, jo John Ferris. John Ferris uh, tells the police, I never come forward for five days because my grandmother, Alice Walker, told me not to. Why? Nobody ever... And is this on record? Oh, this is on record. Then they go to Ferris and they tell him, my Joseph's going to hurt you. And Jodie's mum tell him, so he has to leave Dal Keith and he moves to here. Wow. He's a weird boy. You know, like he sees his daughter until she's 16, sure. There's but, but very bad rumours that he, he, he raped his half sister who's got a child to him. Right. Right. Now, we'll go into this later. At a house, people are burning clothes and all, right? So, Alice Walker. So, while all these people are getting driven about Dal Keith, and there's people up in Mayfield, two miles away from the mm -hmm. murder, burning clothes. Guy John Ferris is shaving his own hair because he doesn't want to look like the killer, right? He's getting rid of a moped, they're burning clothes, they're cutting her in here. Anybody involved in crime know that's that's who mm -hmm. done it, or, or they're involved here, or, or they're acting aye. like they're criminal. Aye. Right, so while well, all this is going on, and everybody's getting rid of phones and burning clothes and cutting their in here. Joseph Jones is going under the mental health team. All that, they found a wee 14 year old boy. They've taken me to Dalkeith Police Station and own Dobies. Mm -hmm. I'll so. Aye. <laughs> give him the full works. So, I've seen I've seen obviously clips of like of them in the police station, and um, 
a lot of people kind of I've heard people saying that he was very calm, cool, collected. What do what do you make, what do you make of that, Scott? Well, ah, listen, he could be, he could be. But other people see the police who, who arrived on the scene. Aye, the original police who arrived when they found Roddy, they tell you he was terrified. He was ashen faced, and he hardly could stand. And when the policeman says, "Go and show me where it is," it. And he went, it's down there. And the policeman says, come over the wall. I'm not going fucking back down there. And the police are describing a, a terrified boy. Is that all so, so uh, record, record as well? Uh, so all of a sudden, they went for this terrified boy to a boy who had no emotion. See, like... So it'd be easy. I mean, obviously, trauma works in different ways. And, 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 and obviously, people, you've got fight, flight, fawn, I think. Uh, um, uh, and another one, fight, flight, fawn, there's four. So freeze. So it's, yeah. it's, if you... If, if you, you could freeze at that moment um, and then that would that would maybe look as if you're emo not, uh, no, like, uh, not emotionless uh, if yeah. you froze instead of going uh, which is, is understandable Sean he's 14 he's 14 just, year listen, old I'm, and you've just I'm, seen a, your girlfriend oh, listen, and they're brutal listen I've seen a lot of violent photographs Aye. over the years eh, crime and, oh Jody John's injuries hor horrific mate. horrific we're going to but they take him in the Dalkey police station Sean right an hour an hour after they find the body Full works. So he's 14, so they take everybody to clothing, mm -hmm. strip him, and they photograph him. And he's got no bruises or scratches or, or anything else. And did Jody fight back with this person? Jody Jones fought for her life. That's been confirmed three or four times by uh, Basuto and, and, and other forensic experts. Jody fought for her life. She See, was ragdolled, she was punched, she was bludgeoned, she was stabbed. But If somebody's fighting for their right, so, so life, for the people that don't believe Luke Mitchell, and don't believe you, Scott. If somebody's fighting for their life, you would imagine Jody would be scratching, 100%. pulling hair, whatever, like, be, be. so you would imagine there would be loads of forensic evidence there. Nothing. Um, was, was Luke Mitchell's blood under her nails? Nothing, nothing. Listen, when they, when they, when they, when they gauged Luke Mitchell, the full works, an hour after finding the body, they take scrapings from under his nails. The residue is dirty. His hair is unwashed, it's greasy. And his ankles and his wrists are unwashed, they're dirty. So he's never washed up. He's never scrubbed. Come on, anybody's got an idea of your scrubbing brush. Aye. Nay scrubbing up, nay washing. He's not been washed. His hair's dirty, his nails are dirty. He's got nothing on his clothes, nothing on his body, and he's not got a bruise or a scratch. And that's so you would imagine if, if just say, like you were, you were that person that killed um, that, like a wee lass at 14, you would be in kind of scraping, scra scratching, you would be kind of then. <laughs> Um, he had long hair, am I right? You're saying uh, that long, long hair. hair. Was long there hair. any kind of stuff nothing, in that? Nothing. The hair was dirty. He had never been washed up. We we're in the same clays. He had been reported in we we're in that day. So this boy's apparently mutilated a young lassie, mm -hmm. and then like five years later, there's absolutely no nothing. forensic evidence to uh, link none. him to it. No, none, none. Now that in itself, that in itself, to me, is impossible. I would say that's impossible. Um, so. What is the argument for the other people? None. They, they never gave it. Do you know what they've done, Sean? They waited them. Um, I think it's the 15th of August again for trolls. I've got the wrong date. They'll be on it. Oh, it's the 16th. <laughs> um, they just then just went through motions. They think they've got their man right and then the forensic report's going to come back and prove it's their man right. And the forensic report's come back zero. I know how that works. Zero. <laughs> Of course you do. So they've sat on their fingers for maybe 15 days waiting, waiting on nothing, right? And then it comes back, nothing to do with Mitchell. What they did is they find sperm belonging to Stephen Kelly on a T-shirt. Mm -hmm. And they, they tell the Auntie Agnes, who's pals with Craig Dobie, who they, they are, they do a press conference mm -hmm. on the day the forensics come out to tell the world that Jody Jones was famous for borrowing her sister's T-shirts and that's how the sister's boyfriend's Sperm is on, on mm -hmm. a T-shirt. But they live three miles apart, sure. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out, Jody Jones has got dozens of T-shirts, the exact same as his T-shirts. Mm -hmm. But they just accepted this excuse that the sister's boyfriend sperm is on the T-shirt because he got mixed up in a washing machine. Now, but Just I say for talking sake, that did happen. Uh -huh. What does that, what, 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 that doesn't make look Mitchell guilty. Nothing. Uh -huh. See it's, the guy Stephen Kelly, his blood. There's a mix semen on, on Jody's pants, right? And there's a semen there's blood belonging to Stephen Kelly on it on her bra, and there's sperm belonging to Stephen Kelly on her t-shirt. So there's 
blood. Blood and Stephen semen Kelly. belonging to one man called Stephen Kelly. I don't believe Stephen Kelly had any day to murder. But I don't, I'm not going to say he was needed nothing with Jody. Aye. Aye. You hear me? Mm -hmm. And um, so on the night of the murder, the guy John Ferris and Dickie, the two men right there in the mopeds are, mm -hmm. John Ferris is a creepier man. Mm -hmm. The big guy, Dickie, he's quite a, a, his dad told me a couple of weeks ago when we doorstepped him, we went and spoke to his father. His son's the hardest man in Melodian, and if he had been there when Jody was getting hurt, he would have fixed it. And I say, I heard he left the scene, he come in and go, you damn fucking tear. Right. So you got a guy, Ferris, who's quite creepy, he allegedly mm -hmm. rapes his half-sister at this time, you know? Mm -hmm. um, he's cutting his whore, he's here. He's got his sister, his half-sister, and his mother burning clothes 30 metres away from the, the flat mm -hmm. that they all use as a gang up. He's cutting his hair, they're burning clothes, he's getting rid of a moped, on the night that Jody was murdered. And what did the, what did the police... What nothing, did the, nothing. The police went to him to get statements about how bad a man Luke Mitchell was and how, how every time they seen this wee 14-year-old boy... Did these guys it. end up crown witness ah, evidence? Ah, crown witness against Mitchell. So what, what did, what did their statements all kind of match up? No, no. Listen, John, John Ferris and Gordon Dickey waited five days. The police ask everybody, please, two men on a moped come forward because they're at, at the mm -hmm. Vienna wall, right? at the exact time that Jody's time of murder. Right. They're there. Aye. And they wait five days to come forward. And they ask John Ferris why. He says, well, my grandmother, Alice Walker, who washed all the clays and everything else, she told me not to come forward. And as soon as he told the police that, the police have obviously asked Alice Walker, why did you tell your grandson not to come forward? And he then got threatened by Jody's brother, Joseph, and he mm -hmm. had to leave Dal Keith. And uh, none, of, none, of them was, uh, none of it was ever pursued. None of, none so, that, so the police know that that, that this the, these were told, they were told not to come forward, uh, all this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and there was no follow-up on ah, it? No, none, none. None. So, and this is a big high-profile murder. It's, it's the highest-profile, probably, Casey. Probably. I would say in Scotland, so they know, yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. aye. They, 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 listen, people say, who, who do you think you are, Scott? Uh, condemning police officers carrying an investigation, Sean. I mean, is a uh, what did the FBI say? Because the, the, the FBI says it wasn't him. She says he's too young. He said he called that a lust killing, and he says that Mitchell was far too young. Right, they spent about forty grand, I think. They flew to America. And, I uh, remember that. You got the FBI, right? He was on Piers Morgan the other night. Mm -hmm. Right, um, and uh, 30, 30, 40 grand, Sean. Because mm -hmm. asked us for ten for a retainer to look at it again. Forty thousand pound the tax for his money. They flew to America. They told them it was the Mitchell, so they just deducted everything. They flew a black black felt tip right through the FBI report. So the FBI report was then now useless because nah, because you couldn't use it in court, and you can't go back to the FBI because that that report that the police destroyed. Right. I'm I'm using the word destroyed. Like they've destroyed all the evidence. They just put a black pen through it. it didn't fit their narrative, so they just. <laughs> Do you mean? So just to let people know, obviously, the crime come up with a crime narrative. That's the charge. Mm. You did murder Jody Jones. Mm. You did you, mm. you blah blah blah. You used this. What's the? I I I'm because I'm kind of find that hard to kind of. Where is the? the there's, so there's absolutely no evidence to even. Fit the, John, generally, I can't I can't reiterate this enough. There is no evidence. <laughs> the circumstantial evidence aye, aye. you know like he was meant to be meeting Jody and he never had an alibi the big one is uh, his brother see if you're going to commit such a murder you're going to have an alibi aye his brother says he come home for work and uh, he didn't know if Luke was in the house and then they, they found out he'd be watching porn in the upstairs right would you be watching porn if your brother was in the house no well he wasn't there aye do you get me aye and, it, so the, and this it, is their case this is it they never had an alibi he was going to meet Jody indefinitely and he walked right to the body now this is a he never found the body, Sean. He listen. He's a fourteen-year-old boy. He takes his um, dog out a walk to go searching for Jody, and he walks up this path, and they're waiting for him. I don't believe they travel for a house, but that's a different story. The grandmother, the sister, and the sister's boyfriend—they're waiting for Luke at the top of a path. Not one of her family, three hundred yards away, her, her brother's here allegedly. I don't believe he was here. And the state father, Alan, Alan Owens, are a creep. Can I say that? Aye. A creep, yeah, man, right? And then. Um, they're 300 yards away from home, but they didn't even go looking for a wee girl that's missing. Why? Why did they allow an old woman, an old woman, by the way, an old granny walk three miles or two and a half miles through woods and all that to, to go to this path when they're 300 yards away and they never went looking? So they had been out until one and two in the morning prior to all this. All of a sudden, 11 o'clock at night, everybody's terrified for Jodie because she's missing. She'd been up. 
Stored place, Monk. Hash that to one and two in the morning. Aye. It was a regular thing. It wasn't irregular. And all of a sudden, there's a big panic, and we just knew that was it. Listen, that weekend in Dalkeith, it was like Lourdes. They were having these miracle things, you know, like well, we just knew something was wrong. So Luke Mitchell walks up a path. He's met with old Alice, the washer of the clays, the friend and the grandson, and all that stuff. And then she gets something to walk back down, sure. And they get to the V in the wall, right? And uh, the dog allegedly, Luke Mitchell says, when the dog goes past the V, it puts its paws up in the wall and sniffs in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he walks back to the V. The V in the wall is just an entrance over the wall, aye, right? Aye. It's a break in the wall. It's mm -hmm. the first one and the last one, one way or the other. And as he goes over, he walks down towards where the dog had indicated, and there's there's a body line. And he shouts, it's here. And then the old grannies went over and cradled the body, and Stephen Kelly's went over. He's saying the bushes were touching his hair and all that. But no friends, they never took any of their clothes off mm -hmm. him until six days later. That tells you how botched the whole thing is, eh? And um, Six days after. Six the days after they found Mitchell is when they went back and took the clothes off of Alice Walker, Janine Jones. So just to put it into context, when... In my case, for talking sake, mm. um, the two girls who had nothing to do with it, uh -huh. they, um, they were took away paper suits. Uh, uh, um, uh, that's right, sure. They were took away paper suits, um, treated quite quite badly, uh, yeah. um, even though there was absolutely no nobody saying that there was, it was a girl that done it. Nobody, right. there was no... But they're no, in the vicinity. They're in the vicinity. They might have touched whoever. Aye, right. and they're in... They're in they're, they're, so... Anybody that knows anything about crime and knows how the police work, white suit. Anybody with blood on them's get you're getting took away with a white suit. Alice Walker was in a police station, so in a police station, and they put her in a police car and they drive her back to Jodie's home to have coffee with her family. And by this time, she's she's cradled the body. She's also got her other grandson, granddaughter Janine, who's now a police officer, and um, and her boyfriend Stephen Kelly, who's all been in the vicinity finding Luke. And they all get to go home and wash their clothes six days later. Or oh, can we get the clothes you were wearing? That's that's stupid. That's criminal negligence. It's bad, it's bad investigating. So Luke Mitchell says his dog does this, Sean, right? And, uh, and so he finds the body. Everybody in the search party says the same. Janine, Jodie's sister, and Stephen Kelly says the dog starts acting excited, putting its nose in the air, jumping up at the wall, blah, blah, blah. And they... Uh, and then Luke Mitchell looked terrified when he finds the body. Mm. See, six six weeks later, by the time Mitchell was the only suspect, that's nonsense. The dog never acted nothing. He just climbed right over the wall and walked to the body. The changing statements for the first to the six. Oh, sure. Oh. Oh. So obviously, I can speak for the changing statements. <laughs> like I know how that works. Um, they can go for like genuinely one thing to like the complete opposite. Uh, I've seen it obviously in my own case. Um, so what was the kind of so the first statement is looks terrified the dog kind of jumped over blah 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 and then what did it turn into ah uh, look look there was no emotion in Luke and he, and he, he never the dog never reacted he just walked down climbed over the wall and walked right to the body and see this is it is it this is obviously when you just try to piece things together is the is the statements kind of similar no oh, like they all oh, kind of oh, I like it for six same. weeks aye. Aye. I like he, he he was emotionless and he walked right. He just climbed right. Same words and stuff like that. Same, you, you know how it works. Of course, of course, I think my personally, the police have been in and saying your statements on the help and we can. It's him. We know it's him. They told everybody that now, Keith. Listen, this is you're talking about the media, Sean. Digression. I'm furious, so I know. Mm -hmm. uh, within days, everybody knew Luke Mitchell was the, the alleged killer. Within days, we all get told that we like we, we it was definitely him and all that. Like I remember. Like um, even at my kind of race race night kind of thing that you, you attended, Scott, aye, and, aye, and, aye, and, aye. and uh, stuff like that. There was a lot of people kind of like says to me like I thought this was about your case because somebody spoke about look, and obviously um, a lot of people didn't believe it. I think that especially on the street for where I can see, and especially in prison, there's a change in that. There's oh, a change in that. attitude. So I take I take pride in it. Ah, you should, you should yeah, do it, right? I, I don't, listen, I don't, you know me, I stay mm -hmm. in the background and, and then he, listen, that, doing this, but I, I take some pride in that, there's a lot of work going on. I know that, done. I know. And, uh, but listen, it's unfair. Luke Mitchell was um, 14, so he was a kid. How long is it, the, how long was he out until they charged him, Scott? 18 months. So 18 months, they're ah. looking for evidence, and it's hard that ah, yeah. uh, every day, isn't it, they're, they're in... Eight, 18 months right and listen they demonise them every day every day if you pick up a paper Aye. 
He was a beast. He was having sex with his ma. Listen. So imagine this, right? Imagine, imagine like eighteen months, right? So imagine six months in it after the papers have wrote all this kind of stuff. The the everybody's on top of it. Look, ah, Mitchell. Look, Mitchell. Ah. Imagine they just change it. Ah. It's not really going to work, is it? No, no, sir. So once they've kind of <laughs> put all their eggs in one basket for the for talking sake. They're, they're maybe going to need to follow that road. 100%, that's what I think happened. I mean, it come back forensically, or oh, Mitchell's in the clear. They, they, weren't, they weren't going to go in research because they knew I'd messed up. They, they botched the whole crime scene. If, if you think Alice Walker getting him, which is terrible, anybody right. knows crime knows. And, and, and they found that Ferris's mum and sister have sister burning clothes. You know what it says? It's in the wrong area. Two miles away from where the murder happened, but in, a, a, in the vicinity, a gang hut, for wanting a better mm -hmm. word, where everybody went, including Jody and Luke. Mm -hmm. People are burning clothes, getting rid of mopeds, cutting their in here. They never even they never even followed that up, Sean. And what type of people, Scott, like obviously looking looking for you if, and your kind of legal background, what kind of people have, have kind of spoke to you, even like journalists, stuff like that, and, and in believing, look? I mean, listen, Sean, I'll, I'll be, in the last couple of years, uh, the only people I know that believe that Luke's innocent, sorry, guilty, are, are people that are uneducated. And I don't like using it, I'm educated, so I know better. But they're uneducated, they read the, read the daily record, and a daily record tack. Now, me and you know, there's two high court judges now in Scotland believe Luke Mitchell's case is wrong. They don't mm -hmm. say Luke Mitchell's innocent because they're too above that. Ah, of course, right? they can. I'll, I'll can name them, Maggie right? Scott, Lady Scott. Mm -hmm. What worked on Luke Mitchell? She was the last person ever to put an application in the Scottish criminal case. Recently. She was actually a really good QC. Do you, do you know Scott. what done, Sean? They wrote back and told her she 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 didn't understand the points at all. And was really embarrassing, real, real, honestly. So they wrote back to a High Court judge, judge saying she didn't understand <laughs> ah, ah, the points ah, at all. Ah, ah. And who is the judges? That's that's kind of <laughs> is it Carloway and that? Ah, yeah, yeah. And uh, listen, we're going to write the other ones, John Scott. Mm -hmm. Right, George Scott was a, a, a lawyer in Leith when I grew up. He later earned his stripes the hard way. He a solicitor hadn't before he got his silks in there. So you've got two high court judges speaking clearly this case stinks. You've got forensic people, f half a dozen. And am I right in saying the BBC and stuff as well? Oh, the BBC, STV, everybody, everybody's onto this case now. I believe Mitchell's innocent. You've got that Professor Brian Wilson, mm -hmm. David Wilson. He's come to the fight late, but it's good that he's came mm -hmm. in. He says that Mitchell shouldn't have ever been charged, let alone convicted. Shouldn't be charged? Shouldn't have never been charged. He's a professor of criminology. I'm not. He's high up. up. And uh, the only people I know is Jane Hamilton for the Daily Record. She's a hack. She's got no criminal, no criminal experience, none. Has she ever got, has she got like a back criminology background? None, or? none. none. She, I think it was a creative writing course at college. And, and she's friends with the local police. So she'd been feeding a police narrative to the public for 15 years. Mitchell's a beast. And she keeps telling a story about uh, the pen knife. Do you know the missing knife? Is that the knife? Obviously, we'll try and show a photo of that. Um, we'll, try and get, uh, we'll try and get Paul to show a photo of that. So this knife, obviously, if you can just describe it in your hands. Sure, Sean, the blade is the length of my middle finger. Cause I've seen your picture. Two-inch blade, it's a, it's a pen knife, for want of a better word. It's called a skunt knife. And, the, and they found a pouch, but they never found the knife. I can tell you, in no way, shape or form, could that knife have inflicted the injuries found on Jody. How how do you know that? Well, listen, there's two things. The, 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 a pen knife or the size of a knife couldn't do that damage. Right. Jody's um, got defensive wounds. Listen, Jody, I think, 300-odd wounds. Wow. Most of them are post-mortem. Right. So it's after the after, after she the death. Died. After she got choked, somebody took a knife and virtually decapitated her. Right, cut her breast and cut her stomach. But before she she died, she'd done that with her hand at some stage, and she sliced here, and so on a few machete wounds, mm -hmm. dozens of mm -hmm. over the years. Eh? Defensive wound with machetes mm -hmm. is getting quite common. <laughs> she mm -hmm. laugh, but you I know. know. So I know. you see, the defensive wound is very similar. Jody's one her hand. I wasn't done with a pen knife. And um, also, they, they, is there any? Is there any? Um, if you got any kind of uh, backing for the forensic world? Well, listen. Do you remember your case is classy? Right. I remember you came to me one time, 
and you told me the, the measurements of the knife were all wrong that had been fed in court. And I was looking at you thinking that a boy from Cumberland old in the jail. Aye. Telling me that all these professors have got wrong. And you were right. Aye. At the time I quit, had to question that. What? How can that be? Remember being at a, a supermarket? No, no. Aye. I think it was Fraser's in Glasgow, Aye. right? And the kitchen knife, the exact kitchen set that was in that, that house. Aye. And I remember getting the exact knife and asking the woman who had this. I was using the fit we measuring it. What are you measuring this for? So I don't know what this is a murder case. Yeah, right? yeah. But right, as soon as I measured it, a giant I'm a carpenter, he'd say, I knew the measurements that you told me were right. And Professor Basuto, again, Basuto. Well, I ended up Pounder, Jameson, I ended up with a lot. But I think, are they no kind of names that are kind of swaying towards Luke Mitchell as well? Ah, listen, I think they all, like, I, I, I think, Professor uh, Jameson, he spoke it many times with Mitchell. I don't think Pounder has, <coughs> Pounder has no, I don't no. think so. <coughs> um, but Suter was asked a couple of times by Sam Pollan on BBC One. And uh, listen, he changed his tune for the original report a wee bit. Oh, it'd be very difficult. And how? Uh, what about a person that's had a fight with Jody? Oh, it'd be very unlikely that, you know, no DNA. And he says that Jody fought for her life. But there's also a measurement, Sean, in the... Uh, I think it's 200 millimetres, if I remember correctly, eight inches. It's for the, the tip of Jodie's lips Aye. to the back of her neck. Because whoever was stabbing her was putting it in through her mouth. I don't like, people say I shouldn't talk about this, but I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. And um, if if the blade, the blade was touching the back of her neck, nearly coming out, right? Mm -hmm. So it had to be inches, 200 millimetres. Mm -hmm. And if it had been the small blade... No, no I chance. I would go right inside their mouth and they broke all our teeth and whoever done it would have had, do, do you know, like, so that, now, we're talking about an eight-inch blade, do you know how bad the, the, the case is, Sean? 20, 20 years, nearly, 20 years uh, after Jody was murdered, I got a phone call one day for a man, would you like to meet? This has happened to me a thousand times. Mm -hmm. Some of the meetings are... Hey. And they try to be nice and that, but it's useless, won't hey. tell me, right? But this man was not useless. He says, yeah, we found a knife, Scott. I said, look, a, a large bowie knife mm -hmm. and a skip. Now, it was found in a skip that you would have to know where the skip belongs for. Mm -hmm. You couldn't drive past these garages unless you knew where the garage, you, you can't see them from a main road. Aye. But there's a big, large bowie knife covered in blood with the tip broken, found in a skip. And they phone it in in the white suit, mob. Right? So they find this big, large bowie knife and they hide it for the defence. Never tested it, but they took swabs for it. Now... These garages were frequented by the man in the moped, mm -hmm. Paris and Dickie, and Joseph Jones, Jody's brother. Who, and what's the DNA evidence on that knife? Well, we don't know yet. We don't know. They've destroyed the knife. Well, once we found out the knife... They've you know wait, wait a minute. They've destroyed the knife? Ah, they've destroyed everything. Well, I'll just... What they've done, Sean, they, they went to a 14-year-old boy. Three men found this knife, right? Two men and a boy. So is this the actual police forensics that were out, picked this bone knife up? Ah. And then... Took swabs. Took it, swabs, and, and, and then nobody's heard anything about it. Oh, no, they had it. And then when we found out about it in 2022, they destroyed everything. So nobody knows what's on that knife? No, well, the swabs, they were trying to, right at this time, we were trying to get the, the swabs to test the swabs. But the, the thing with the knife, Sean, see, see Jodie's... Why are they not getting the swabs out, Scott? Well, <laughs> what do you think, Sean? Well, I know, obviously, the same kind of, is similar to my case in the way that there was swabs and... They just kind of disappeared, but... Um, Here's what... The, at this, this today, I've just checked when I've come on the train. Um, when Channel 5 aired the programme, Murder in a Small Town, um, we were, we, I was not told, somebody else was told, right, that they were destroying all the equipment. Or, or, or the, How did you find that? Was it, was it a secret? A, a police person. Was it? And then, maybe 18 months ago, the police person phones me. It's got Canava cup of coffee I certainly went I was shocked I said well first I was thinking she's telling the truth they destroyed everything Sean they went to the crown and, and they got permission they never used paperwork mm -hmm. no procedure own phone we want Mitchell stuff we want Mitchell stuff so now we've got serious crime squad based in Livingston driving a fetties in Edinburgh in a van right maybe be out solving Terrorist crimes and serious crime, but they've got time to try, drive to Fetties and load up a van. They got permission for the Crown to destroy everything that was not on the indictment. Not on the indictment, think of the words. Not on the indictment. See, when you've seen the list, what was known the indictment? Mm -hmm. You're going to fail off your chair. The large big Aye. knife, Jody's psychology reports. There was um, soil samples, 
CCTV images taken for your school. Um, oh, CCTV images? Ah, images taken for the school where we all met at night. Nobody had ever known these existed. Jodie's psychology reports, never been, ne nobody had ever even known. So, obviously we know off. how a murder case works. CCTV would be crucial. Oh, crucial. So, so, somebody's seen that. No. And it, so we don't know where the images are because do, the Crown, by the way, Dorothy Bain, married to mm. Alan Tumble. I'm bringing her up, I've got shot in her up to barricade my door, <laughs> it's establishment coming from. But she married to Alan Tumble. When Luke Mitchell was convicted, my He's sources tell me that she was punching air because her husband had just won this great case. And the husband is shocked that he got a guilty, but he got the guilty. So you've now got a Lord Advocate in charge. She's also in America talking about Al McGrackie when her husband prosecuted him. She should never be near anywhere, Al McGrackie or Lou Mitchell, but she is. So they got permission to destroy, I think, 1,400 productions that were not on the indictment. Not on the indictment. Hidden How many? 1,400. Hidden for the defence. A lot of stuff was just nonsense. Aye. Here. But the important stuff, the knife, Jody's psychology reports, another, oh, a drug debt list. They accused Mitchell of being a drug dealer. That the drug debt list belonged to Jody Jones's brother and mother, and they and they gave it back to her. <laughs> Gets worse. So the police get permission to destroy every production not on the indictment, and then they write back and say, "Oh, but we've made a mistake. We've destroyed sixteen hundred productions that were on the indictment. Erroneously, we've made a mistake, but we've destroyed every every single thing: bloodstone, clothing, everything." State well, just to, get, just to get the kind of viewers, I, I, we we contacted the Crown in, regarding my case, and it's obviously just, but we, we contacted the Crown and basically asked, can we get the, the evidence that's there? We want the swabs. Yeah, we're um, trying to get that knife for you, Sean. Mark Daly says, he's, Mark Daly, was, his words were, I've never seen as much red tape in a, a case like this. But I remember Chris Shedd saying in my case, Sean, your case is a PR nightmare if... Ah, it turns out that it was uh, so somebody else that done it. So that's, I know how that works and I understand. So we've wrote to them and asked, can we get, and we've, for October we've not heard anything. They've not even wrote to us to say. No, it's a blank. No. I, I put a letter and this, this sums police up. I put a letter in a month ago. Um, a serious police complaint against DC Doby in Luke Mitchell case, about perjury. He perjured himself in the High Court. There's hard facts, there's no, there's hard evidence to prove he perjured himself. And there's other hard facts prove that some officers perverted the course of justice. So what is that, obviously just so the viewers know, what's the kind of, what kind of hard facts is it, Scott? Well, the... do you know, he, he told the High Court under cross-examination that uh, he, had, he, he did not have any search warrants for any other properties apart from Luke Mitchell, his father and his mother's business. Right? right, and he got asked, "Is that not unusual in a murder case? Well, only one search one for one person, do you know? No, no, that that's how he went. That's a lie. He had a search one for a a school friend of Luke Mitchell, and he went into the home in Mayfield, uh, Woodburn, and Dalkeith, and took a green parker. Now everybody knows in this case a green parker's a key, aye. burning the key. But he had the green parker. They had it. What makes it case shot? I took a boy to a police station and mm -hmm. I, I stand by what I do. I sometimes regret it for the shite mm -hmm. you get, right? Um, 50 grand. And then they went in the appeal court in 2008 and the, the police told um, Alan Beckett, mm -hmm. Beckett, Lord Beckett, now, Lord Beckett told the appeal court, Mark Cain did, didn't he kill Jody Jones? And uh, there is no, me telling me how he wrote essays about killing a woman mm -hmm. in the woods, no essays existed. He made me a liar and I'm thinking, bastards. Just last year, there's ACs there, both of them. Found by the Scottish Criminal Case Review Commission in 2013. This is 2023. So the commission knew in 2013, 10 years ago, that lies had been told in the appeal court. Mm -hmm. So I submitted a report to Police Scotland about that, mm -hmm. the ACs, and the perjury. Do you know what? <laughs> they wrote back. Uh, we can't, they never even... They never even uh, took any consideration of criminality committed by mm -hmm. their officers. All he says, all he says was, uh, this case was investigated and we're happy with outcome. Fuck off, roughly. Translate. So it's, there was no kind of um, acknowledgement. No, of... Nothing. They never even they never even acknowledged the fact that possible crimes. Police Scotland are, are as corrupt as the Met, you know. Mm -hmm. And and the recent case in 
Greater Manchester. We've mm -hmm. all seen that. Police sitting on evidence that kept a man in prison for 13 years. They police officers should be jailed. So well, what I've said before, Scott, is obviously you look at you look at because obviously there's there's victims and it's it's so it's hard because I've said it before. There's no winners in a miscarriage of justice. Ah, there's no nice. winners, um, and it's hard because it's. You don't want to say to you, people get upset and quite rightly so. It's like there's a lot, there's a lot of hurt out there. Um, but why would why would people think that the the, the, the system's changed so much for Joe Steele and TC, and it's changed so much for Craig McCree and John Jenkins, who you won? Obviously, you won that appeal. Um, why why would people think that it's changed so much? I I, I don't think people do. Just John Jenkins. That's actually, listen, I'm very proud of it. Very, very few people have overturned conviction. So I know, definitely. And uh, John Jenkins murder conviction overturned. And, and if I, he, he got done for Mob and Ryan as well, right? Aye. We couldn't overturn that because we think he would have, she would have gave him life for the Mob and Ryan. Aye. You know, they only gave him seven Aye. years Aye. for the Mob and Ryan. You shouldn't have laughed, it was brilliant. Listen. No, I remember him coming back listen. into the hall. I remember him coming back. I was at the because that was, how, that was so weird. That was, um, he showed me, obviously I'd studied a wee bit of law, Scott, and obviously we were kind of, you were working on my case and stuff at the time. And John Jenkins came into me with appeal points and I remember looking at him and going, you, they're not going anywhere, mate. Oh, yeah. So obviously because we had the doc ID in my case, mm -hmm. which obviously never turned out, but we had the doc ID in my case. And just to let the viewers know what doc ID is, it's you can explain it, Scott. Listen, Doc ID is um you you have presumption of who the person is. When you walk in the court and a man sitting behind the dog, there's a presumption, a natural presumption that's a, that's a man who committed the crime because the police officer arrested him, so you it's easy to identify him. And they've been unable to identify him in like a a, a a <coughs> viper or a kind of uh, Sean, this is an hour when they look Mitchell. Sorry for Luke Mitchell. I did. I went to the Supreme Court in Boston again. Listen, because uh, Jane Hamilton's telling everybody I never, I never became a solicitor. Never been in the law society. He's just a criminal. With a well, you were my lawyer. I remember <laughs> that. So, and I went to the law society. They can't make him a phone call and, and do that, but it spread all your lies. You know how, how Aye. for the police, by the way, Jane Hamilton worked for the police and to smear me. I never went to the law society and stuff. I went to the Supreme Court on Doc ID. Right, because dog ID is dangerous. No, it was if, if you've never seen a person and you walk in the court and you think, oh, I think it's that bastard, but he's in the dock, so it must be him. Aye. So we argued that for John Jenkins overturned his murder appeal because somebody had seen Jenkins just before he went in the court or Aye. something like that, right? Luke I Mitchell, think it was the, the police actually took somebody in the court, somebody in yes. the court and said on another trial, so, that's John Jenkins, Jenkins there. That's right. So and, when um, you walk in the court, aye, that's aye. Him, do you know? Aye. So the Supreme Court rule on dog ID. Everybody Jimmy knows. Holland went to Jimmy Holland's case. Oh, yeah. aye. Jimmy aye. Holland, aye. I'm forgetting him. I'm forgetting him. And uh, look, Mitchell's dock ID. Now, Andrea Bryson sees there's a woman called Andrea Bryson driving along a roadshow. Listen, it's impossible. I've done it a thousand times. There maybe not a thousand, that's exactly a hundred times. Aye. Right, driving along this road and try to look. Mm -hmm. Right, and see a couple standing there. And in 2003, the road was bendy. Aye. And the the, the, the hooses doing the side weren't built or impossible but she claims she's driving along the road and she's done that and she sees a boy arguing with a female and definitely the boys look mitchell they go to look, they go to angina bryson and they show her mug shots the 12 and 13 year old boys remember the mug shots the wee ones aye. books in them aye. and they show him because mitchell's not been in trouble before so therefore he's no and a mug shot aye. so they gave him a kodak and somatic do you remember him Aye. Man, now you press it, you slid it. Aye. You had one of them when he was in police custody with a bike background. Is that the man you seen? Aye, that's him, that's him. But she goes into court. Can you see the man you seen that day? No. And now remember, bear in mind, he's been all over the newspapers Aye. for 18 months. For the time she identifies him to the police, she's been in the paper every day. But she gets in the high court and can you see the man you seen that day? No, I can't. Opposite to... to mm -hmm. These things they happen, and I don't think people understand how 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 much it happens, Scott. Well, Sean, in the Luke Mitchell case, is much much different, and here's why: she picks him out. She can't pick him on rock ID, which is very strange. Eh? Aye. You can pick somebody if you're a big white photograph, but when you get in the court, the man's sitting right in front of you. He's been in the paper every day for eighteen months. I can't pick him. So you know me, I dig, Aye. I dig and loot. People in her family tell me she never seen anybody. Just a pure lies. Her husband, um, Alan, 
Alan Bryson at the time, right? He's, they're all related to Jodie's. They're, they're in Jodie's house on the morning after the murder. Aye. Right? Three hours before she picks him out on a photograph, they've been in the Jones home. Aye. Right? Angina Bryson allegedly never seen anybody. Her husband was bad with Kit. Aye. And uh, do you remember the DF 118s? Aye. The paw marks on his face, yeah. Aye. Right? So he's in a bad way with drugs at the time. He allegedly sees a couple, but he doesn't want to come forward because he's close to the Jones family. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's no good evidence, and he's stressed and he's full of drugs and blah blah blah. So the wife, I seen the couple, and it was him. Then good in the local. So they're community. kind of friend. These these people are friendly. They're all friendly. They're all friendly. They're all. They're all how long did it, how long did it take? A couple of days. Andrea Bryson to come forward. A couple of days she come forward. So, obviously, she faded with Keith. She she local. She moved to Australia, but years years ago, when I was working with Graham Man, when Aye. when your case. We went to uh, Newton Grange. We chapped a few doors, looked for Andrea Bryson, and eventually we got a phone call at, at the office. Uh, this is Andrea Bryson. You're, you're, you've been looking for me. You want to come and meet us? Aye, aye. Me and Graham Mann go to the, ho the home. And uh, she's sitting in the home, right? She's sitting with um, her husband, fair play. He, I've been to go meet a lawyer on one night. But she turned up with her mother in law and her husband. And this is Jane, we're all sitting in our living room, we're shooting boot, remember, with briefcasing, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Miss Bryson, uh, it's just that, listen, why are you looking for us? And Graham Man says, listen, this is our job. We spend our life trying to fix wrongs, you know. And um, all right, what, what do you want? And it's generally very politely put to Miss Bryson, you, you pick Luke Mitchell out for a big photograph, but when you, when you go into the high court and you see them in the dock, you couldn't pick them out. Can you tell me why had his appearance changed? And before we could say any more, the mother, ah, that's a good fucking out mouse, go mouse. You're putting words in the mouth, this is it, that's the end of it. We're like looking at each other, I mean, Graham Man, like what? And it's like, years, years right. after it, do you know, then I find out, some of Andrew and Bryson's family say that she did not see anybody that day, that she, she done what was good for good in the community. Do you know what I mean? So, go to court the, and then the community think that. It's Luke Mitchell, so she's aye, done aye, that to kind of help the community aye, as, aye. as... Hang on. So... Gets into court and then can't go through with the, the, the whole thing, you know? Waited a couple of days. So is this the main bit of evidence against I, Luke Mitchell? She, she went to collapse in court and she couldn't identify her. Everybody thought that was the end of the crown case. So she, so the evidence is collapsed? She's, she's not even went through with it? No, she never went through with it. She says, I can't identify him. So Mitchell's meant to be up at, up at East House. He's right two miles away from his home, right? No, walked up his path. Now, if he isn't there, it's not him. It wasn't him anyway, because it wasn't he. He wasn't there. No. And she says, no, I can't identify him. But she identified him two days after it. And then she sees him every day in the paper for 18 months. And then when it gets to the court, she can't go through it. Yeah, ah, I totally get it. It's her conscience is probably the better. Well, that's, they, they traced her for Channel 5, right? One of the police officers, Mick O'Neill, that was involved. Do you know, right? They chased her. Because there's police officers believe Luke Mitchell was innocent ah, as well. Most right? of them, listen, most of them. One told me just recently, apart from the murder squad team, Scott. Aye. Oh, yeah, I've got suspicions. That's horrible. But Sean, the real, the real thing, listen, your case, you know I've done Aye. the work I've done, done your case. And I can state for anywhere. Sean Toll did not you, Aye. put in that, uh, the, the colour the, the color blow went Aye. in the chest, it went down there and there was a wee nick at the end of it. It went in, if I remember, 160 millimetres and it was 43 millimetres or Aye. something like that. I know that case. I can state hand on heart. Sean Toll did not inflict Aye. that colour blow. I know that for a fact, right? And uh, So when I talk about your case, I can talk with I, I know because I've Aye. measured it and been there and, Professor Pounder's one of the proudest days I've ever had in my life. I met my coffee off the eight niners. Or, Please, Professor, tell me I'm right. She when you see I'm right, sure I've already danced. Do you know what I mean? Months, but that, that was amazing. Like, obviously, Pre Professor Pounder was the top guy ah. at the time and obviously trying to get him. But this is the type of stuff I've tried to explain. This, none of this was ever held in court with me, with my case, none of it. So ah, yeah, it's yeah. like the same as look. People don't understand how this stuff goes on. I was talking just, just to the... The big thing about Luke Mitchell is, oh, there's a lot of things. No, right. I think they're destroying everything now, Sean. They've destroyed every evidence. I think they're going to destroy all the swabs. So we can't... There's 14 deposits of sperm on Jodie's body. Right. On her lips, her breast, her buttocks, and her, her stomach. Whose right. sperm is that? It's never... Whether it was not tested due to malice or, and, and the um, corruption, or whether at the time they never had the equipment to test it. But right. that's available now, fresh evidence. Right. 
I don't think they won that tested because that's going to raise questions. No, of course, because you've got DNA 66, now, haven't you? Yes. So do I think they're going to do, Sean, they're going to destroy everything. All the swabs, they've destroyed all the evidence. And what they'll do is you, you'll go into appeal court under disclosures. Aye. You'll win his disclosure and he'll go out and the police will say, yeah, but it's still him anyway. Aye. Rather than find out who done it. That's what I think they're trying. Aye. You know? And uh, here's the thing, you, you mentioned the high court, two things. Mitchell's a child. Mm-hmm. That's that's the thing that really gets me fourteen, Aye. and then and and the Daily Record and the, the media acted like a savage. They were just dogs. Eh? A, a lynch mob. Do you remember the old cowboy film? Do you Aye. remember? Ah, oh, they get him, get him, and they just Aye. lynch somebody and they, they pick on somebody in twenty. That's what they done to a wee boy. Aye. And they one or two defend it. Jane, I keep mentioning Jane Hamlin's only one I know still defends her position. She, she, she her whole career was based on spreading lies for police. And then now the lies are coming home. Roost, in my opinion, you know, times change. Dal Keith, everybody knows Mitchell never killed Jody John. Aye. There's a few, obviously, close to the family, but most. most. No, it's 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 a, it's it's a it's a case that people talk about <laughs> quite a lot. Even it's a, it's kind of a household case. So a lot of people <laughs> um, obviously seen your kind of Channel Five documentary as uh, well, good. which was really really good. Um, and I think it's just the whole fact is. It's just it's so it's just so sad. It's so that me boy went to court, right? And we thought it was just the other day. I forget one of the corruption of the police since Craig Dobie needs jailed and a couple of others, they, they need imprisoned, in my opinion. And um they, they, they done that to a kid, mate. Aye. To protect their pensions and their wee BMWs. I've got a job in the daily record that it's a child you've just set up framed for life. So what well, that's what they're like, eh? Aye. A child. When Luke Mitchell went into that trial, right, there's no evidence against him. I can't reiterate that enough. Aye. There is no evidence. There's circumstantial evidence, like he wasn't in the home when he says he was, but that's it. Aye. And the rest, Marlon Manson, have you ever heard so much genuinely no, nonsense in all your life, right? See the FBI, obviously, we take them as the, the big hitters <laughs> of <laughs> the people who, they're like the, 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 the creme de la creme of right. catching killers. And their report came back and said... Ah, he was too young. Susie far, far too young. They called it a lust killing. See, when Jody first got found, the police told everybody the person that done this is sexually embarrassed. They called it a sex crime. Sean, there was a condom. Do you know how bad the case is? Jody's lying here and 50 metres away, there's a used condom with fresh semen. Mm-hmm. Whose semen's in that? Yeah, well, his name will come to me now, right? I actually feel sorry for him, because I don't believe he had any day with the murder. However, right. however fresh semen... It doesn't matter then. It's, yeah, it's, his name's I'm getting seen out. Right. And they'll come in with now. Faulkner, James Faulkner. Right. Right? Big James Faulkner. He's, he works in the buckets and that. He was over there with, I believe, a 15 year old girl, right? He was 19. And the fresh semen. But the police never even found out who that condom belonged to, Sean. 15 metres away from a wee girl that stripped naked. And then you're Jane Hamilton. It wasn't a sexual crime, so that it wasn't important to find out who owned that condom. Have you ever heard so much shine of your life? A condom next to 50 metres away from a naked wee girl and she's saying the condom was no importance to an investigation. What investigation? What? Where did you study, Paul? Do you know what I mean? No, that's insane. Do you know when they found out, Sean? Three years later, Paul. He came out of an our crime and his DNA come up in the, the database and he says, oh, that's who owns the sperm. Sperm, a fast semen. So... When Luke Mitchell went into court, with this just yesterday we had this conversation. When Luke Mitchell went into court, defended with Donald Trump, they did not know about Mark Kane. Mark Kane's fascination with his music taste put Marlon Manson to the shade. He had a fascination for mutilated corpses covered in self harm, a very troubled childhood, not all right. Uh, so they didn't know about him, they didn't know he could have been in the air at the time. And the, they didn't know about the Parker court. They didn't know about his, the, the weapon. They didn't know about Jody's psychology reports. Uh, they didn't know Jody's brother had been sectioned five weeks prior to it for, by the way, ragdolling his sisters, part of his mm -hmm. MO. J Jody was ragdolling mm -hmm. on the day she was killed. He carries a backpack with a large baby knife. I'm doing that with my hands, by the way. It's big enough to, to inflict the wounds. Mm -hmm. They didn't know about that. And uh, so did he even get a fair trial to begin with? No, because they never investigated it. Sorry. I think when you people expect, we, we were actually talking, we were talking to somebody not that long ago um, on the podcast, and they were talking about how fairness is doesn't come into it. People don't understand that oh. that is the high court are turning out convictions. They're not interested in. You have um, to understand there's a big difference between law and justice. Eh? Hi. Oh, how many times were you in the appeal courts? Sir? I know. But mind is the record. The record. 
times, right? I think it was, I don't know, I thought it was 50 odd, but it was like, it was definitely 40 odd. And they said um, that I dragged that family through every time. I, I had no option. I did. I can't ever turn around and say to the judge, do you know what? I can't be bored with this here in the day. I, I was just going to align no, with what was happening. So rightly so. Listen, sorry for the deceased. I'm totally, genuine. totally genuine. sorry for it. Now listen, I get accused of it. Aye. I, you're shaming Jody's family. Let me, I'll, I'll go on the record and say this, Sean, I didn't care. Aye. The only p- person genuinely that I've got respect, I'm not a Luke Mitchell fan, per se. Aye. There's demonstrations, you know that, and then there's people canvassing and they campaign for Luke Mitchell. I don't. That's not my that's not my bag. Aye. I got involved in this the day after Jody was murdered, before Luke Mitchell was even in the frame. Aye. So my my instinct was for Jody Jones, eh? So Aye. Get off, I know. No, so definitely. Right. And uh, listen, I've heard all, I've heard all the bad words online. He's a midnight and he's a grass and he's, he's talking to the police now. So I'm not coming on, I'm a lawyer. Do you I know. mean? Aye. As a wee girl. If anybody, if any man that I knew wouldn't speak up in that kind of crime, to me that's not really a good man. Eh? I'm not caring if they're a drug dealer or a murderer or a guy. Word, the word, most, gr- the word grass, the ah. word grass is if you're um, you're a criminal ah, and you're in that world yeah, well, and you're, you're you're telling on other criminals. That's a grass. John, do you know this? I'm going to genuinely listen. I sat during the COVID and I wrote my book. And at first I was going to try the legally, academically, and go through caseloads. Your, your case, that case in Manchester right now, I'm got Matt Manderson. Aye, Philip, was it Philip? No, just recently, last couple of days, Gary, he's got a very, a very much similar to look. The Manchester police sat on, sat on evidence for um, 10 years when they could have freed that man. And um, so I was going to write it through case law, to all, like bringing certain cases that's got similarities to this. But you know, I started getting angry, Sean. So you know, I started looking. Listen, I feel genuinely sorry for Jody's family because they lost a, a wee girl. But see, what I know about that family and what wasn't in court is I, 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 I lost any respect or any sympathy I vote for any of them. Paul. Is it Andrew Wilkinson? Ah, yes. Listen, Andrew I was Malkinson. going to use cases like him. I could tie your case in my looks. Because their measurements are in for the murder weapon. And, and Andrew Mal- Malkinson. Aye, Andrew Malkinson. When, when you read his case now, all the similarities between him and Luke are, right? And it's all disclosure. Police sitting on swabs, do you know? It's, it's just, you know, all you're looking for, all, all we're looking, all, all the pe- people really are looking, we're looking for fairness. Of course. And you're looking for a fair, <laughs> a fair trial that looks at all the evidence and takes all the evidence into account and then you put it to a jury. Instead of what we're getting is we're getting young boys like myself, like Luke Mitchell, that don't have a clue what's happening to them. We're getting put into court where then afterwards you're, you're finding bag loads of evidence. Aye, aye. And then you can't get it into the court. It's so, near impossible. So how, do, how do you overturn a murder conviction? Listen, people, all your it's, trolls, see your aye. trolls. Or your, you troll the one, the one, one right blogs about me. I've met this one before, so we married to Simon Hall. Aye. Right, and I briefly heard the Simon Hall's case when I was in Miss Gary's Justice. I know, I've heard the case. I don't know I've the whole case. No, I don't know. Next thing this woman's writing blogs about me. Uh, that he's a bank robber, he's never been a lawyer, and he's this and he's that. All because I'm, oh, and he's done this to the Mitchell family. Listen, I, I stand by in and I've said about George's Aye. family. I genuinely don't like them, if I'm being honest. He's one or two nice people, and I, and I feel genuinely sorry for the loss, right? Aye. Uh, no, it's a, it's a wee lassie. What do you mean, Luke Mitchell? See, I know. I, I, I swear, John, I would take an oath for Luke Mitchell didn't he kill Jody Jones. Now, I've studied lots and lots of cases, eh? and some of them you walk away and you think, there's a question mark. Aye. Although the evidence doesn't prove that, but there's still a doubt or what? There's no doubt in Luke Mitchell. No, I, I believe I, I've always, fair met you, Scott, and obviously we spoke and stuff like that, and obviously you kind of gave me the download. And as soon as I found out that it wasn't Luke Mitchell's um, DNA and blood that was under her nails, that was a massive question mark for me because it, that that was the main bit of evidence for me. And Did you see Channel 5? Channel 5 had, had to take the programme down and put it back up because they left their name on the screen. Aye. Right, and they named Mark Kane as number two suspect. That's two senior police officers, crime um, scene management, no murder Aye. squad detectives. They know what they're talking about. Aye. They put Mark Kane on his number two mm-hmm. suspect. Right, Mark 
Sadly, die by the way. He had cleaned his cell up, he'd drugs up, helped him with that. Aye. I said, I didn't hate this like that boy. Aye. But I thought he had something to do with that murder and acted how I acted Aye. in that life, right? And uh, then they, they, they put Joseph Jones, Jody's brother, doing his number one suspect, right? This is two murder squad detectives, Aye. right? And uh, they couldn't do it, and, and other people, campaigners, talking code, or they didn't want to name people. And I thought, nah, I'm getting sick of this. Aye. I'm getting sick of this. Why should they have immunity? Aye. Right? Now, I'll just tell you briefly, five weeks before Jody was murdered, Sean, five weeks, Joseph Jones was sectioned under the Mental Health Act for beating Jody. Aye. Smashing up pussies. And, and uh, when, when he used to phone the police for him, he used to come in van rows. He's, a, he's a quite a brute, do you know? Aye. And uh, psychotic. So we're reading his medical record. The medical records got sent to Luke Mitchell's defence team prior to trial. Aye. But they've opened them up, seen whose medical records are, and didn't think they're any good for the defence. Aye. And signed the back of the envelope and put them in a defence box. And they lay there for 20 years. This is like Paddy Hill stuff, isn't it? Ah, like when the way yes. that we had Paddy and that found it, that do not ah. disclose to the, the defence. Instead, they know do not disclose to the defence, they're just destroying it. Ah. So that they, ah. they probably learned for that ah. mistake, ah. Ah. like keeping it in a folder. Well, scraping under Jody's name. But see, see, going back to Joseph, five weeks before it, now Jody's ragdolled. Her hair was pulled to her head and all that, right? Yeah, there's other statements. He ragdolled his other sister. He uh, swung her about with the hair, he ragdolled her. But five weeks prior, Sean, to Jodie being murdered, um, he sectioned for beating Jodie, ragdolling her, ragging her about the hair, smashing up homes, and he's getting it medicated by the maximum amount that the law permits. It's the first time I've ever known that the law and medicine could mix like that. The law tells you you can't give them any more of that drug than, than that level, Aye. right? So they're giving Joseph Jones a maximum antipsychotic drugs on top of jellies and whatever Aye. else to keep him mm -hmm. mellow and all right. And they, they tell him when they release him, we don't want to send him back to the, his home because his mother's psychotic. Aye. She's on the anti medication, manic medication, antipsychotic medication also. They didn't want to send Joseph back to the house because it's volatile. She does not force him to take his medication and she permits him to smoke bucket balls. And is this on record? Oh, I, I, medical records, but they, they never got put before the court. Right. Then it says, uh, cannabis, smoking cannabis resin makes him paranoid. Now, when Joseph's paranoid, I'm saying this on record because I'm mm -hmm. up for it. He wears a, a rucksack, and in the rucksack, he's got a large bowie knife. Everybody, so this is just your view, Scott? This no, is, no, 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 this is fact. This is, this is everybody, fact. Oh, everybody in the village right. is telling you he's, he's mm -hmm. rucksacked, and, and, he, and he's got one of them, do you know? Mm -hmm. right? And he's pulled it, he goes to people's homes and all that. He, one guy called him a junkie, and he summoned him to the house, and he used the word summoned, you better get to my house, right? And the man had to go, do not he? Uh, Joseph's house and the mother says, ah, oh, you've been called my son a junkie. And he went and stabbed him and stabbed the mother instead. Joseph's psychotic, Aye. violently psychotic. Mm -hmm. Now, they say when he smokes cannabis, he gets paranoid. When he gets paranoid, he wears his rucksack to leave the house. He's been smoking bucket bongs for three days prior to Jody's murder. Nimmo Smith and sentencing Luke Mitchell. <laughs> oh, so honestly, you, you can't believe some of the stuff that's been said here. He says uh, throughout this case, he, he cannot find the motive. Why you would want to call that girl? Do you know what the motive was? He allegedly had a. This, a is, the, this is the the, ju the trial Lord, judge. The trial judge, Lord Nemo Smith, telling Mitchell when he gets sentenced him to twenty years. <laughs> uh, I can't what, find a motive. motive. I can't find a reason for for you to have committed this murder. But he then goes on to say, "I have no doubt in my mind. I'm trying to get words with Varbatim. Varbatim, uh, yeah. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind that the smoking of cannabis resin led to the psychosis that led to the murder of Jody Jones. He's, exp he's fucking describing her blur. On record, this man's psychotic with smoking ash. He's smoking bucket What's the records of Luke Mitchell being psychotic? None. none. He's been tested. He's Has he ever been under the mental health none, act? None, never, never. But Joseph Jones had. Now, after the murder, when Jody Jones is murdered at 11 o'clock at night, the brothers, everybody in the local community, by the way, Aye. everybody, Oh, Joe's done it now. Hey. No, I believe it's him. Aye. He just disappears under the mental health factor. He goes to his mental health team. My sister's been murdered. And then they protect him. He's now protected. Hey. He, didn't, he gets questioned like five weeks later. He's sitting like that, eh? The medication Aye. kicked back in and stuff, right? And then, well, Sean, listen, what, what, what they allowed him to get away with? Listen, he's psychotic, smoking bucket bombs. He's got a large blade. He, then, is it five weeks or... Jody was last seen getting followed by a man described as a stocky man. Aye. Right? A man wearing a backpack. Aye. Joseph Jones. 
Aye. Two people say, ah, we can identify him. Well, one says... Was was there any evidence that Jody was scared there, bro? Oh, I'm terrified. So was the other sister. The other sister moved into the house at 14. Is this the one that's a police woman now? Police woman now. And, and she what says, did she say? She says in her statement, she he ragdolled her and uh, swung her about with the hair and stuff like that. But the, the, the brother, all this in, in addition to the brother, the, the local community are all saying Joe's done it. Aye. Or oh, Joe's done it now, <laughs> right? Aye. Five weeks after a man says, I seen Jody, Jody alive. The last positive sight in the Jody is seen on East Tussie Road. And she'd been followed by what they called a stocky man. The stocky man was later identified as Joseph Jones, her brother. So the family's tell lies and say, no, oh, Joseph is upstairs sleeping. He left the home Aye. at the same time as Jody. 15 minutes before she's killed, he's seen walking behind her. Right? Now, 2013, um, the commission speak to one of the witnesses who identified Joseph Jones. They, they identified him wearing a rucksack and then when they seen Jody's funeral, they, oh, we'll go back, we'll go, funeral in the media, remind me. Um, the man sees him at the funeral and says, that's the man that was following Jody. So I've now got a positive ID, somebody following Jody, who's Joseph George, who's psychotic, got a knife, got a history beating her, do you know what like, right? And that never treated as a suspect. Never ever once treated as a suspect. And that never put before a jury, he was excused for getting evidence twice. So they, they've never heard it? They've never actually heard? The, the jury never ever heard anything about Joe. Case call, call and he took pills, I think, to try and commit suicide. Got excused. And then the court got put off. Right, and recalled the second time, and the second time, a mental health act again excused. Now, you mentioned, you mentioned, right, Jody's funeral, the media attention, this is how bad it was, sure. Dal Keefe is incestual. I grew Aye. up there, so I'm entitled to see that. Eh? Oh, you, oh, you're talking about Dal Keefe. Some parts of Dal Keefe are beautiful, and I love the people, Aye. eh, right? But some of it's incestual, you know, you're married to a cousin, <laughs> you can't get a house in a certain street, <laughs> you know, all right, right? right? And, and there's a, a lot of truth in it. Right, so you can imagine in a wee place like that when the focus is on you for being a beast and a killer. It's constant, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. The day that Jodie gets married, married, the day that we Jodie goes buried, Luke Mitchell was told not to go to the funeral. Right? And they have a vigil inside the home. The mother's a witchy type. <laughs> we trink it, sing it here and her, right? And they have a wee hang in the house with candles and all that. And, and James Matthews for Sky, do you know who I mean? Aye. He interviews him. Aye. He goes I to the home that. the door, right? Aye. That's the worst. Whoever gave that advice to let him into the home is shocking, right? Aye. But anyway, they let him in. For years, years, I've watched that and thought, look at it, Sean, the wee boy looks terrified. He's obviously on drugs, Aye. right? And the mother, you've got the whole world media against you, you've got everybody calling you a beast in the two of them, and she's got her ear around him, and that Ian Stevens. Remember, Aye. I worked with him Aye. at Bozo, I despise that man for what he did, right? Oh, it looks like him and the mother are having... i never seen that. Might, might be right. It might have been sleeping his mind. I don't know. That didn't Aye. make you kill a wee girl. Aye. But the man I watched this interview, I thought, he's asking that wee boy questions that only coppers could ask under caution. Right? Aye. Did you kill her? And, we... and obviously police weren't allowed to answer, uh, ask yes, these questions. Yes, yes. Because he hadn't been charged Aye. yet. Right? Aye. And for years I thought... Well, a couple of years ago, last year, a, a very, I'm going to name him, he's a beautiful man called Alec Bennett, God rest his soul, right? He was a local trade unionist, Labour Party, but a coal miner. Aye. Yeah, Scott Edger books are awfully impressed, he thought Mitchell was guilty. Aye. So he turned on the rumours, Aye. do you see him as this? And he says, hey, Ken, what, you never, do you know Ken James Matthews, Scott? I said, I know James Matthews, this guy, no, how would I know him? He says, he stayed in the village. I said, what? His brother Brian Matthews is a local copper who was going about Dal Keith telling everybody Luke Mitchell's got with Ken, it's him. I'm just not going on the wee bastard yet. This is James Matthews for Sky is local for Dal Keith. His brother's a local copper and they're telling everybody in Dal Keith. Now Luke Mitchell's a wee bastard. We've got with Denny Ken it, we can it's him. I'm just not going on on him. So all your golf clubs, Aye. your football clubs, your boxing club, Brian Matthew, the local copper. Aye. They all hate him by the way, all the young team know. They know he's a, he was a prick. <laughs> But he's telling everybody in the local area, we can, it's Mitchell. We just know what in and on him. And then next thing, his brother appears for this guy. You fucking question, Corey. So you can imagine that's a 14 year old, never been in trouble. The mother's half daft. I'm going to say that, but I say that Aye. fondly. Do you know what I think I can Aye. say that, right? She's an eccentric, shall we say, right? Aye. So you've got an eccentric mother and a 14 year old laddie, and you've got the world media 
Oh, was the world media? Uh, do you know, on top of you, you've got Sky, Sky News inside your home. And I've often says, how did he get in? And Alec Bennett says, oh, son, he's for the village. I say, what? Oh, he's now shut his... Have you ever had the chance to speak to James Matthews? Ever wrote to him? Nah, I've, I've tried on Twitter. He, he just blocks that, son. He, he's taken to the interview and everything, you know. Did he? Aye, aye. Listen, that's wrong. He's been briefed by his brother. No, I mean, even not the way, the way the, I remember the, actually, because I remember watching and just thinking he was guilty of the wee guy, just the way they were questioning him. And it was just loaded questions, loaded leading so questions. Thing, the, 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 for day one, is it, day three, I think, the name of Luke Mitchell, 14 year old boy, that, that in itself. Listen, do you remember Cliff Richard? Aye. This is a bad example, right? But this gives you people an example. I've always believed the BBC helped Cliff Richard. People say, do you remember they put a helicopter over his home, right, when the police are raiding it? Aye. And all pre criminal proceedings thereafter stopped Aye. because they're being prejudiced. Aye. Now, did the BBC and all the, all the lawyers no understand that? Aye. Oh, okay, listen. But anyway, Cliff Richard's case against him got dropped because he won afternoon of filming. Well, Mitchell was 14. And he had 18 months for the daily record, the sun camping in his garden, hiding behind bushes, taking photographs of him, fucking Sky News, you know. The police naming him in a paper after three days, no other suspects, we're not looking for anyone else. Oh, he was sleeping with his ma, he was a devil worshipper. Listen, he was in the Marlon Manson, he wasn't even into that. He was a, he wasn't even, I've heard he's a goth, he was a scared boy. I heard, I, I've heard he was a goth and he was a Satanist and aye, a, aye. all this stuff and he, the, he, he, he had stuff in his room and... The bottles of you, right? Aye. He had to be telling you them, but there's two things, Sean. I looked into that funny enough. Two things. If, you, if you're into witchy stuff, aye. it keeps the bad demons away, right? Right. I'm laughing at you. Aye, right? aye, aye, aye. So you keep bottles of semen in the bottles of uh, urine and you're drawing that, it keeps the spirits away, right? Or the other one is if, if you're traumatised... You didn't want to let in and out, so you didn't want to get in and away, so you hoard everything. And, and urine, hoarding the urine is like keeping it to yourself. Now, we're talking about a 14 year old boy who was traumatized. Aye. Even if he was guilty, Sean, he would still be traumatized, right? No, of course. So, all the urine in the, in the, listen, do you know, listen, he had a, a liaison officer living in his house, listen, some of the stuff. He listened to him and him. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have laughed, but it's real sick. M &M, M &M. I mean, I listen to M&M. &M, I'm trying like, to think, what was, his, what was his missus' name again, sir? Who's Marlon Manson's? No, no, fucking M&M, &M, what was his? Kim. They sit, the song Kim, and you know when he screamed at Yeah, fucking... Stan. Aye, aye, when he's shouting bitch that to Kim. Aye, oh, aye, aye, aye. He lets the little liaison officer hear that song in the house, and she puts that down to him killing Jody. I've listened to him, <laughs> I listened to him in the moment, okay, I listened, that make me a killer. But that's how Especially he's portrayed 14, it. 14 year old, it's 14. like, it's bits like that that you're attracted to. Like. His fascination for Marlon Manson genuinely centred on one magazine and one calendar. Not on his hard drive that he was in, into Marlon Manson. He was, he was into Marlon Ma Manson, but no, the only two goths in this case is Janine, the sister, black lipstick and all the black eyes and all that, and the guy Stephen Kelly. Now, but the Portrayed Marlon Manson on this wee laddie. No, this was it was a massive thing, the Marlon Manson. But just looking at it, obviously we're, we're kind of we're kind of drawn it a kind of close here, Scott. Right, so we've got we've got a cut things just to cover. So if you get anything else, just to, to you would like anybody else to know about the Luke Mitchell case, just before we move on, because I know there's something else that you would like to talk about. Just a wee kind of brief kind of talking about the the, the investigative stuff you're doing there now. Um, so if you want to just kind of sum up the kind of what, what would you say to the people out there that are saying listen Scott he's guilty and that's it uh, listen anybody that says he's guilty again Sean they're uneducated and I don't mean uneducated like they're beneath me I don't mean and everybody's entitled to their opinion right? of course and I argue I, I, I did argue with them on YouTube and I just gave up uh, anybody that's read this case who, who who's intelligent or, or for an education, educated background Oh, no, Luke Mitchell didn't kill Jody Jones. Aye. You've got one, one, one who writes blogs with me and you and your parents and all that. Uh, was Sandra Hall. Sandra Hall. Right, she married a, a lifer who raped an old woman, right, and, and she stood by him, terrorised families, and then when the guy allegedly confessed, she's now taking it upon herself to everybody else that claims it's a miscarriage of justice. She goes and tells everybody the person's guilty. She doesn't even know nothing about the case. She wasn't in touch with his own family and she now attacks everybody. Oh, that Forbes is this and it. Generally, read this case. Right. Anybody that says Luke Mitchell killed Jodie Jones, go away and read the case. Then you read Where can you get the case, Scott? Ah, well, listen. She, she, oh, do you know one of the best blogs I've ever seen? 
There's a man called John Smythe. That's no his name. Might be she might even be a woman. But there's a man called John Smythe, Smythe investiga Investigation. Sean, it's top notch. The coverage of this. Listen, they can point to me and Sandra and say we are emotionally attached. Right. right. So they didn't want to believe Sandra and they didn't want to believe me. I'm not emotionally attached to Luke Mitchell. I'll right. state that right. for the record right now. I, I know Luke, I've met him, and I found him to be a very um, intelligent, soft boy, you know. Right. Uh, i never seen a man, but, but, but who am I? I'm not a psychologist. Right. And uh, Sandra's mayor in Rope. Right. So, right. so if you want somebody that's no involved whatsoever, a pure... As John Smythe investigators, they find him on Twitter. He's also got a blog, but his take on Luke Mitchell is off oh, second to none, Sean. Aye. Please go and read it. And that's a kind of um, somebody that's no involved in it's a. Um, ah, he's neutral, Sean. Neutral, uh, he's a neutral kind of stance. You know, he's, and, and, and genuinely, his blogs are saying, I, I genuinely don't know who the man is. I John don't think Smythe. his name is John, John Smythe. Aye. He's on Twitter, but John Smythe investigators, oh, he's first class. No, that's obviously for the viewers can go and look at that because obviously it's a big case and it's one of these cases it's that people... But obviously the Channel 5, I would try and get M to watch that as well, your Channel 5. And your book, Scott, what's your book called? Long Walk to Justice. Long Walk to Justice. And that goes into great detail. Oh, about listen, the, everyone, I name everybody, tell every Do you know, like... The, the, what I'll tell anybody in this, the question I would ask anybody on Luke Mitchell, how is it possible, seriously, that a person can have a stand-up fight with another person, pull her, pull her here, strip her, beat her, mutilate her, and not have uh, any scratches, saliva, blood, semen, nothing, nothing. How can you escape forensic links between such a crime? Me, it's impossible. No, it's important, especially when they're looking for it so hard. 100%. Like, see, when they're looking for it so hard and they still can't find something. So on the went 18 month, they went 18 months looking... To, to find evidence against his boy and they found nothing. Well, he's into Marlon Manson. He allegedly, he's too close to his mother. That's all just gossip. I know. So they come out with gossip and they... And no, it's, 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 it's scandalous, really, when you look at the... That you can go into court. Am, am I right? It was a majority verdict? Uh, yes. By the way, do you know one of the jury, ju jury members gave thumbs up? To the Mitchell family, to the Jones family. I understand the passion. I'm fed out Keith. See the thing. No, it was, it was a everybody, huge, it everybody was a road. Everybody wanted to kill Mitchell. Ah, I know, I, I remember it. It's not until you stand back and please ask anybody you think. Instead of being, oh, Annie, they're, they're Annie Sandrilene or they're Annie Scott Forbes. What's Scott Forbes go to do with Mitchell? Oh, you're asking people today. And, go and, this, go is, and this, is, this. this is what this podcast is all about. It's giving people a voice and it's giving anybody a voice that wants a voice. And anybody that's kind of, um, that's been involved in crime or whatever. And it's just to look at it from all different angles. And to me, Scott, I think you've proved that, that, that Luke Mitchell, that's only my opinion, but I don't, to me, you've proved it that, that he never done it. And I do believe he never done it, but that's only my opinion. Of course. So um, people are entitled to their opinion. People are entitled to tweet what they want. People can do what they want. So I don't have a problem with that. It's up to them, but um, so just quickly moving for you, Luke Mitchell, just just as we can I draw it a close, what, what are you up to the, the, these days, Scott? What's, what's uh, happening I'm these days? Still investigating crime, sure. Still, still, listen, people are going to ask me about my law. Can I tell you quick? Aye, when I when I went to the law society 2010, Sean, I went with um, I think it was 10, 10 years, 2000, no, that, nearly 20 years free any crime. Aye. No, you still get him all. He's a bank robber. Mm -hmm. He's this and he was never a lawyer. Just, just pure lies by Aye. a daily re record. No, I can, I can. You, you were my lawyer. You were, you were there. <coughs> you were in my, involved in my case. I went to the Law Society in 2010, Sean, with an argued Rehabilitation Offenders Act. The spirit, Aye. everything in law is written by spirit. Aye. You know what the spirit was intended. Well, it, it was meant to rehabilitate people. I went to the Law Society. By the way, I'm going to name him because he's, he's getting older and you don't mind it. Sir Tom Farmer, do, do you know who I mean? Aye, aye. I went to Sir Tom Farmer when I was studying. I mean, I've I done my LLB show now. I, I top 5%. I couldn't cut and paste or anything, but so aye. it tells you I've got a good mind for it. Mm -hmm. uh, top 5% allow me to do what they call a legal practice diploma. Mm -hmm. But the Law Society still hadn't told me by this time if I could practice law. Mm -hmm. So 12 grand it cost me for my LLB because I've done it postgrad. Then your legal practice, I think, was 7 grand, but I get 75% off because mm -hmm. my grades... And the will be, you know, in the top 5%. Still, the Law Society hadn't told me I could practice law. 
they, they say you have to complete these this first. Then I went to the Royal Society, everything completed. We had a reference with Tom Farmer and, and, and a, good, a very good argument, 20 years free crime. Ah, of course. And they, and, they, and they voted, I think it was uh, two, two, two to one, a three panel, right. Joe. And they, so I joined the Lord, Lord Society as a fit and proper person. Some of them hate that. I yeah. take my hat after the people that voted. So, um, yeah, listen, I gave a good argument. 20 years I, free, exactly, listen, there's, and there's my right. grades. And, and look at the work I'd done. Right. I was in Drumchapel at nine o'clock at night. Do you remember the Bluebell Woods murder? Aye. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? Oh, that's, one, that's not my favourite case because I never won it. And uh, sadly, both boys are dead. Aye. Right, Ian Murray. Oh, what they done. Aye. That's the saddest case I've ever read. Aye. Right. And uh, so I'd done a lot of decent work. Aye. When I went to the Law Society and I, and I put my work forward. And, and, uh, and I think it was uh, 2004 years later, I'm sure. I, I just never re re renewed my... I didn't have any desire to work as a criminal Aye. lawyer. Start spending your life in a sheriff court. I know. No demeaning any people Especially either. Especially when you're watching... <laughs> You you've got an appetite for justice, ah. and you're starting to see that this isn't really that, that as you said before justice and, and, what, the, and the law of two different things. things. I, I prefer right. So what am I up to now? <laughs> okay, listen, this is all going to come out. I'm, I'm smiling because eh, you know there's <laughs> going to be a better eh, for the last probably year. Any Mitchell stuff in but, and the last year I've been looking for three three bodies, but three bodies, three bodies, right? Linda Spence. The high profile murder. Ah, uh, she she was murdered by Colin Coates. Right. And then and, and co accused. Uh, and we're looking for her. Right. Uh, How's that going? Uh, well, we've had a dig show. We've had a small dig and, and and to a designated area, but we weren't allowed to dig it, we were only allowed to scrape it. Aye. Right? Because we think do you know Aye. out of respect for a dead body. Aye. Well, if he if found her, he phoned the police right away. Listen, we never uncovered them for three or four days, but scraping. We're looking to get permission to go back and dig again. Susan Pulley, do you remember Susan Pulley? No, but it rings a bell. Susan Pulley's a, a, a girl from Edinburgh, allegedly. A, the, the killer, uh, Gilroy, still claims he never killed her, do you know? Right? Aye. She's buried up quite <laughs> and no too far away from where Linda Spence. Is it? Ah, aye, aye, and still, the rest aye. of be thankful, but listen, phew, he's a very clever man. Turned aye. the phone off and on and, you know, aye. right, all that. And uh, people, it's a needle in a haystack. Aye. But when you got decent people... I run about you. ...in prison, aye. eh? Aye. I'm, not, I'm not your normal investigator. Aye. I can go to people in prison and aye. sit down and speak to them. And, oh, listen, I've got a decent trust, you know that. Aye. I can know, all, know everybody, all they, they hate you and, and some people, but I've got a decent trust. Aye. We, we, we prisoners that I can go to them and say, listen, can you help here? Aye. And, uh, and the other ones, are the, the girl doing an Inver Kip, Margaret Fleming. Right, I know and that you know one, aye. aye. And uh, listen, that's it, that's it, the least. The other two have, have been on it for a year and I've just started looking at this one that we, I build up to other things. Aye. And uh, so, uh, that I've been looking. That's, so what that's what I'm up what to. You're so. Three bodies. They've got me working here. I'm sure, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure you'll, I'm sure you'll yeah. find one at least. Um, but no, it's it's obviously so it's sad to talk about all these kind of these cases, and it's really sad. And there's a lot of victims out there. There's a, a lot of kind of um, hurt, and I understand it all. <laughs> um, but it's people like yourself, Scott, that we need to speak it, and people like yourself that we need to talk about stuff like this. Sure, I go to Dalkey. I'm fairly. My, 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 I don't need my daughter's here, my wee grandson and all that, you know. I've got family there in Dalkeith. And then uh, I go there, no, I'm not saying everybody, because a lot of people say eggs bang people's bag. But 90% of the time they come and shake my hand. Aye. Well done, sir. Somebody Aye. had to talk to you. Know? And I've Aye. always been big in the move, you know that. Aye. Something's good to be saying, I'm always at after. You know what I mean? I'll call it that what you want, eh? And uh, as you go older, being it after the, the fire and all that, it turned out good, you know, right? But that's, but a lot of people generally, generally I've had, when we were filming stuff and uh, people driving past in cars and get, getting your move. Aye. And, uh, and some, of the, some of the abuse you take online. Aye. Can un I can understand that. Aye. One of the best abuses I took was Joe Jones' wife. Aye. She's quite clever. She goes away and asks you questions. Google's, Google's DNA Aye. and they're, they're experts. Aye. <laughs> and, uh, how, how you can just know that and that? But fair, fair play, you understand. Aye, she's her allowed, husband, she's allowed, her husband and, and, and they're allowed. And, and some of them have decent conversations with you. The other ones just start, you're a scumbag and you're this and that. Just listen to people, who, who cares? 90% um, sure. You dial Keith now. Believe Luke Mitchell didn't kill that wee girl. That's a massive 
turned round there. Massive. And uh, I'm not listening. Andrew Lean's work second to none of the campaigning groups. Aye. There's too many groups for me, Sean, and there's groups and groups, and I'm not a campaigner. Aye. I see this on record. I'm not campaigning for anybody. I'm campaigning for who called Jody Jones. Aye. If that free, frees Lou Mitchell, all, all the better. And uh, but my, my goal in this is to, to catch the killer. Catching the colour releases. You believe it. You, you, the way, the way obviously you come across, and the, the whole reason that you come on this podcast, Scott, is for justice for Jody Jones. Jones, definitely. Um, definitely. Listen, justice for Luke Mitchell now. Aye. But first and foremost, and uh, I, I, I didn't see that. Listen, I'll, I'll have them, whoever, whatever you want to call them, right? Oh, you listen, you're a prick and you're a, you're all banks and you wouldn't have right to say this about the family. I'm not caring about what they say. Mm-hmm. Say and you want about me, I'm not caring. As long as it's the truth. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Daily Record tax, he's just a, a, a barefaced liar. I mean, telling lies for 20. Listen, when you see that knife, Sean, and you see Jody Jones's injuries, to even write the story of missing knife. We we'll all show a picture of the knife. We we'll ah. all show it so somebody can see it. So and, can and, see it. and the thing that got to me, what, genuinely, I was speaking to somebody the other day, there, I know mentioned the BBC person, mm-hmm. right? And uh, she asked, uh, Scott, what's the most emotional you uh, she's finding the S's? Because I read, read for years, did it? People don't like you being in the paper, Sean. No. No, when you're called this or called that, it's right. different. You're in the paper in a nice flick. You know, the gangster tells you, well, that's a good story. No, right. they're on the, the right side. Right. <laughs> you know right. that. Right. Next thing you're in the paper, he's a lying bastard. And there's no S's existed. And then you go into the police logs all these years later, and there's the, there's the S's hidden. Fucking tears streaming down my face thinking, you bastards. They knew. The Scottish Criminal Case Review, Review Commission knew about these essays for 2013. And they've That's, just sat in it. Sat in it and done nothing. The same as that boy down in Manchester. They had forensics that could have freed him in 2011 and just sat on it. And I'm sitting reading this. See, see when I was reading it, Sean, I generally had a policewoman. Aye. A policewoman's thrown me stuff. She's ashamed, by the way. A policewoman's ashamed of their colleagues. Ashamed. What, what they're up to and telling me, he's got, look, this is what they're doing. They've destroyed this, destroyed that. And, and just for you, she says, look, and up on the screen, fucking two S's. I, am, I, am I right? Am I not right in seeing the Daily Record? They actually wrote, they, they, like, wrote a story about the, them destroying ah, evidence, ah, a kind yeah. of positive story. No, no, the son. Was it the son? Son. The son. Uh, can, I'll give him a name if you don't mind. Aye. Uh, a wee guy called Doogie Walker. Aye. Hey, son. Mm-hmm. Brave, eh? Aye. Listen, he's, Very uh, brave. He's the first one to do it, Sean. Aye. I said, listen, people online say to me, the son's fully this. And no, okay, listen, I'm not a tabloid man. I read them. I, I, I don't know what believe them, me. Eh? But the wee guy did be walker, no, I listen, stood up head and shoulders, he's not a big guy, but he's a, he's the first one to write, hey, police destroying this, and think, see the, 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 the scrapings from their jodies, right. they've got the aim and never tested them, Sean. I know, it's bizarre, it really doesn't make they, sense. They, they went back to the Jones family in 2021 and gave them back a drug debt list, and they've got, and they've got a guy called John Ferris standing in the high court saying Luke Mitchell's a drug dealer, they've got a drug dealer and a drug debt list, list speaking against Luke Mitchell. Madness. So, listen, there's been a walking about, I can assure you, walking about the Argyle Forest the last six months. Aye. Aye. Bit, took my mind off it, just sort of thing, you know, right? If, if I can find these bodies, Sean, it opens up a, a, a doorway for other prisoners. Aye. All, all prisoners. Anybody who knows the whereabouts of a dead person or a dead child, Aye. you know, uh, come forward and speak. To the right people, that the, the, there's possibility there could be a deal for the people. Do you know Aye. a legal deal? Aye. Whether that's right or people, oh, that's all wrong. But if, if you're a loved one that's got a, a missing person, and, and somebody in the prison who's doing six years or seven years can can speak to somebody in jail, and they've shared a cell with somebody, and they come and say, "There, I know where that body is," and, and, and the crown give them a deal. I'm all in favour of it. Aye. That's not a police informant. That's a person um, <laughs> trying to help. Help right. themselves, but they're helping mm-hmm. society. In the meantime, they're not saying, "Oh, he committed a crime." They're, he, they're only saying, "There's a body." Mm-hmm. Now, if I we can go and find the bodies, but Susan Pulley, because she's from Edinburgh, and then some of the people connected to, so we bring great sat- professional satisfaction. Eh? It'd be professional, and the families would get. Um... Ah, listen, and and uh, listen, it's better. I'm a giant to trade show. You right. put me back on a bounce site, but... right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No. And they thought, where have you been? <laughs> See when you tell them, they look at you like, you're very, what? Aye. I've been in the Argyle Forest, what have you been doing there? Jerry? Back in the midges, you know, right? But at least, it's for there, active, Sean Brown. No, you're, in, you're, you're that kind of, that type of person, Scott, you're always going to be. Um, so, 
obviously, like I've got to kind of this obviously time's running out, right. and um, it's been absolutely magic having you on. It's it's been, well, it's, like been ball, better, right? it's been better. Uh, Do you know what a lawyer says to me one time? Right, we're slagging me. He says, uh, "Kevin, okay, your problems, Scott. I've got lawyer problems, obviously. Right? <laughs> uh, you like you like the clients better than you like lawyers." And I said, "Ah, you're right, mate. Uh, I did, eh? Uh, you say well, I'm not going to name others. Uh, but, uh, I had uh, uh, a decent client list, uh, <laughs> and." Uh, I like the clients better than like some of the lawyers I worked with. Aye. Not a motor, I listen. Uh, no, I know what you mean. Know? But there were some, some clients I liked. Uh, by the way, coming into jail, we visit you. It used to bring you pals. <laughs> well, let me see. Okay, it's too late now. But do, do you know what I mean? Aye. I was going into visit. I was going into the diggers and, and talked and Aye. going right into the pits. Aye. Briefcase and suit. Do you know what I mean? You visit guys at your pals. Aye. Or the other, do you know what I mean? I so, ah, uh, listen. But, oh, good. John Jenkins was uh, probably my career highest. Aye. To overturn a murder conviction, people didn't understand how difficult that no, be. No, it's massive. I, I'm, I'm proud of the work I've done in your case. Aye. I never forget meeting Powder. Or, or, I think it was M9, if I remember, in a cafe, you know, and she used to tell me I was right. So I was getting at that, right? And, uh, and I'm convinced. Oh, Mitchell case will snap. I'm convinced it. I hope so, Scott. I think uh, the police are going to destroy everything so they can't find out who the colour is, although there's, there's things... I could not want to say, anything, you know. But I think in the, on the disclosure and stuff, Mitchell will win his appeal. Mitchell will go back into the appeal court and just on disclosure issues. Aye. It, right, it'll overturn his conviction. But I think um, there's people speaking out now, Sean. Aye. No, there's definitely a, a, a change in attitude. There's definitely a change in the wind. Ah. Um, so honestly, Scott, it's been fabulous ah, having you on. Really I've enjoyed it. Again, I know, it? same with you. It is and, um, if any changing changes we will give you back on. Uh, oh, if any changes we I can change Luke Mitchell case. Okay, so listen, no, it's not about history. I make jokes, I'm gonna make history and I genuinely Aye. I would make history. I would. And then uh, I'd make all your all, all his study and listen, I don't know how hard works on people. Aye. Listen, I make jokes about all that. that. But seven years at uni wasn't easy, probably. Aye. From my background and, I know. and uh, if I can overturn Luke Mitchell's conviction. Oh, no, I didn't mean me, I mean people. Aye. You know, there, there's a lot of people involved, as you know, right? But if I can be part of that or find out who killed Roddy Jones, I'll, I'll be very proud of myself. And and, and I think, um, Sandra and all that are into Luke Mitchell. Aye. I'm into finding the killer of Jody. Aye. And I think, I think there's a possibility that can come, you know? Aye. I don't think they kind of people will, can keep the kind of secrets for all that long. That's my opinion, you know. They, mm. They'll be codes that they're doing on Facebook, eh? those, those that know do not speak. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, Somewhere no. along, somebody that knows will speak, Joe. That's my, my thing, eh? No, brilliant. Honestly, Scott, um, pleasure to have you again, as ah, I said. Brilliant. brilliant. Um, and I'll hopefully see you soon. <laughs>